today is the woman behind the voice of Bart Simpson. Of course, Nancy Cartwright shared some memories from over 30 years of The Simpsons. And Brian Baumgartner, who played Kevin Malone on The Office, he spoke to us about why fans love The Office so much. And later, Fran Drescher told us why every human should own a pet. And our buddy Leah Remini revealed what she likes to watch. It might surprise some people. All right, that was a good teaser for you. Let's get to today's first item. It's Nancy Cartwright. She might be the most recognizable voice from The Simpsons because she plays Bart Simpson. She's the voice. She's been behind the naughty and rebellious Bart for 30 years in The Simpsons, and she told us what it's been like to be part of such an iconic show. You know, when I was cast as Bart, it was like, it was such a dream come true for me because I think everybody has a little bit of Bart Simpson in him or her, you know, in them. <laughs> It's true. We all have these personalities. We're we're a, we're such a, a such a conglomeration of so many personalities. I describe Bart Simpson as being a ten year old school hating underachiever and proud of it. That was the description that I read in the original audition when I went, and I was supposed to go in for Lisa, but I decided I wanted to do Bart and he just seemed more interesting than an eight year old middle child. His description was so much more clear. So I went in and Matt Groening was there and I had an idea in mind and I said, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh my God, that's him, that's Bart. And I was hired, boom, on the spot. <laughs> Eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? I think Bart Simpson's probably got the most catchphrases of anyone. It's, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? Eat my shorts, get bent, no way man, cowabunga, whoa mama. I mean, all these things are like, whoa, <laughs> score. It's such a hard question to answer about like, what's my favorite, I don't really, it's kind of like asking who's your favorite kid. There's a good handful of episodes that definitely rank up there. Some of my favorites are the musicals. I love the musicals, like Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, you know, that's a really good one. Cause that's that takeoff on Mary Poppins and Sherry Bobbins is so funny and the singing of it is just crazy. You know, if you want to be our sitter, please be sweet and never bitter. If you wish to be our sitter, please be sweet and never bitter. Help us with math and book reports. Might I add, eat my shorts, Bart? Oh, when Bart gets an F, that's the title of it. It's the first show of the second season. And kind of humbly speaking, I guess, modestly speaking, that one, it got a lot of attention. And it takes Bart it turns him into, from the first 13 that we did the first season, that episode really shows you a level of Bart Simpson that you had never seen before. And he goes into, he just gets really, really sad. And he's super sincere about how he tried to study. And he starts to cry because he feels like he's gonna flunk the fourth grade. And um, that, that stands out in my mind. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I would think you'd be used to failing by now. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I really tried this time. I mean, I really tried. Early on in the show, um, it was made very clear to us that, that the actors are not the stars of the show, that the characters are the stars of the show, and I, I, nobody had any problem with that. I don't think anybody had any idea that the show was going to go on, you know, 33 plus years and, and turn into the icon that it is. But we instead were all like armpit to armpit, elbow to elbow in one little tiny booth that was not meant for recording in. So we had like moving carpets up on the walls because they were one big wall was all glass. And when we spoke, it would vibrate. So they had to put a carpet in front of it and we would all share the same microphone armpit check you know uh, um, and here I am very pregnant it was a lot of um, give and take from from all of us actors but it was I, I look at that and like that is such a such a humble modest beginning for what came to be you know it's pretty cool
when I meet fans, it's like, it's, it's pretty cool because most of the time I'm not recognized. Most of the time I'm just this anonymous celebrity and it doesn't matter where I am. Nobody, because I don't look like him. My skin's not yellow, nine spikes. I'm not a 10 year old boy, but I can have more causation over revealing who I really am. And so if it's just a spontaneous thing and I'm talking to somebody and I ask them, so what's your name? And they say, oh, my name's Katie. And I'll say, oh, hi, Katie, I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? And it is just like the jaw drops to the ground. And it's equally fun for me. It still is to this day. I love surprising people. And it's kind of a cool thing. It sometimes pops people out of their funk. And isn't that kind of what we need right now? We need some kind of enlightenment. We need some humor, some lightness, some aesthetics. One question that people like to ask me is, why is The Simpsons so successful? How has it lasted this, this long? And I think it just, it, it actually doesn't even matter what, this is funny to say this, what decade you look at, because we're, <laughs> we're in our third decade. That's crazy. But no matter what decade you look at, The Simpsons has a consistency in the, the business model, in you know the way that it's done. It's got this family that has its own kind of rules or or lack of uh, lack of rules and they're kind of a nice quote unquote normal family and i do think they represent a lot of people that can say wow that's us you know whether it's the simpsons or all the citizens of springfield it's like people can find things that they can relate to and that has been such a success and the tip of the hat to the writers and the executives on the show Thanks to Nancy for sharing all those memories with us. Next up, we're revisiting the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company with the Office star, Brian Baumgartner. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Welcome back to Popstar Plus. We have Scranton, Pennsylvania on the mind for this next flashback interview. Hard to believe it's been 17 years since the premiere of The Office, the hit TV show about the work lives of paper company employees. Brian Baumgartner played the lovable Kevin Malone and weighed in on why he thinks people still love the show so much. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. I want to eat a pig in a blanket in a blanket. Nope, it's not Ashton Kutcher. It's Kevin Malone. Equally handsome, equally smart. Well, Kevin Malone, <laughs> how would I describe Kevin Malone? Uh, I think Kevin Malone is uh, a man of uh, some unique skills um, who uh, is, is misunderstood in a way. His childlike sensibility fits into the rest of the ensemble of The Office um, very well. I had such a blast playing him and, and continue to be delighted by, by how fans re react to him. 
I do think that of all of the other actors and 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 characters uh, on the office, I do think that that probably I'm the most dissimilar uh, to mine. My Kleenex shoes were a huge conversation piece, but man, my dogs are barking. But you know, look, I loved, I I loved his ability. Um, to be in the moment. I used to say he has no memory of what happened before or any ramifications for what might happen uh, in the future. But in the moment, he uh, if he enjoyed a moment, he was willing to show it. Um, often didn't think too far ahead, but I had uh, I had a blast playing with him. And, and you know, our little uh, our little group in the corner, the accountants, Oscar and Angela and Kevin, I, I describe it. As, as kind of a perfect comedy triangle. Well, I need to give my cat up for adoption. Mm. The one who uses the doorbell, or the one with the Mexican hat, or the one with the rain galoshes, or the one that you let go around naked. Which had nothing to do with us, which had to do with the, the writers and the construction of the characters. But um, the way that the alliances kept shifting, their specific personalities and how they played off of each other uh, was so much fun to do for, for almost a decade. I think for me now, my favorite episode would have to be Stress Relief, um, otherwise known as uh, the Dwight's fake fire drill. Oh, here's a door. Check that one out. How's the handle? And it's warm. Okay, go to the back well, door. Well, uh, another option. Another option. Jeez. Okay, settle down, everyone. And I think, you know, for me now, um, there's so many great episodes, but I, I think for me, what was happening outside of the show uh, carries special significance for me as well. So I think it's a hilariously funny, well-written episode. I saw a friend today, it had been a while. We forgot each other's name. A lot of things spring to mind thinking about the finale. I basically shot the show my 30s. My whole 30s was dedicated to being together, which is, is high school and college, and then two more years, uh, spending a lot of time with those people. So, you know, it was really knowing that whatever happened, the, the friendships would be there, um, the relationships would, would remain, but we wouldn't be spending 60 to 70 hours a week together anymore. And that, that was gonna be a, a huge change uh, for us. So uh, a huge feeling of loss, uh, but also tremendously proud of the journey that we had and the fact that we chose to end it. We had a story that we wanted to tell and we made sure that, that we got that story in uh, and told it, you know, largely with, with the original people who were, were cast. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone who was on the show could have ever guessed that the show would end up doing, um, becoming what it has become today. I mean, we were, we were almost, we almost, made a pilot and was never on the air. And then, you know, the fact that, that an audience picked up on it. I always knew what we were doing was special. If people gave it a chance, I just thought, well, people aren't gonna give it a chance. So um, I'm I'm tremendously uh, proud of the show. As I say to people, I'm I'm a fan of the show and, 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 and love watching it. And, and I'm so proud to have been a part of it. You know, in, in examining through this book that I have coming out, Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, you know, one of the things that we are looking at is why the show has not just survived, but has thrived eight years after we have filmed any anything. And I think that it's really about the people. Uh, it's really about the construction of, of, of the idea and the aesthetic of the show that was so really revolutionary and groundbreaking at the time, but the hiring of the specific actors to play the roles and the writing staff that was brought in, which are now the top comedy writers in television today. You know, it was just a, a special and unique collection of people uh, led by Greg Daniels, who, you know, created the show um, and uh, and his genius in, in, in finding the perfect people for their job. That's really why I think. What a classic. We love that show in our house. Hope you enjoyed that one. Office fans, it was for you. Coming up, we've got nanny star Fran Drescher sharing the key to easing her anxiety. It happens to be her furry friend. Hi, everybody. Good morning.
morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel calm? About the time I stopped the playing, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Did you know that Fran Drescher is a huge, huge dog lover? She's even had a famous dog of her own. Get this, Chester. That's the dog on the nanny, was actually Fran's real life dog. She told us all about that and how her pets have shaped her life in this episode of our series, My Pet Tale. I start on the nanny and I wrote a part for my first dog ever, Chester Drescher. Oh, Chester, I haven't seen you in such a long time. Nanny Fine, please, he doesn't like strangers. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Chester was an amazing dog because he was extremely consistent in his behavior. We knew what he would do under certain circumstances. So we wrote towards that. And that was why every time, you know, Cece Babcock grabbed him away from me, we knew that he would growl. Oh, how thoughtful. Mm. <laughs> So we always had her do that. You need some time to get used to you. I mean, you can't expect a dog to just jump into your arms and love you at first sight. Mr. Sheffield. Oh, you got her a puppy? Oh, how sweet. Oh, look how friendly he is. And it was great working with him because he was always on the set anyway. I'm always of the camp, must love dogs. I have a, a dog now. Uh, Angel Grace, and I rescued her just days before lockdown, and then she rescued me. And for the first couple of months of our relationship at my house, you know, it was just her and me. I don't think she really uh, knew what was happening, but all of a sudden, you know, it was just the two of us for a couple of months, and so it really did bond us. And we're very, very close now, and she's three years old, and I travel with her, and she's my service animal, so I'm just very grateful to have the first big dog I've ever had. And, you know, she uh, gives me added security and, uh, and helps me through situations that sometimes would otherwise uh, make me anxious. She's kind of different shades of white and bone. And I thought she was so loving when I met her at the rescue place and so sweet uh, that uh, I said, you know, are you an angel? Did Samson send you to me? And Samson was the dog that sadly uh, had died just days earlier uh, from a stroke. I said, are you an angel? Is that your name? 
And it just seems suitable to her because she is such an angel. She is definitely a big part of the family. She's got all these other mothers who come and take care of her if I have to go out of town and I can't take her with me. Dog is God spelled backwards, and I think that dogs are here to teach us unconditional love, to remind us that there's room in our hearts to love another, even if you've loved and lost. And I think that every human should experience unconditional love. It's just a, a bond between two species that really is unparalleled. I just, you know, couldn't live without having a canine to love and care for and feel loved by and share my bed with. Just be there as a friend and a companion and company, a wonderful company. In fact, as a cancer survivor, you know, I always tell other people recently diagnosed, make sure your pet sleeps in the bed with you because at night is when your imagination and fear starts to run wild because you don't have the distractions of the day. And if you don't have a pet, get one. Well, it's really nice to hear people's pet stories. They mean so much. All right, still to come, Leah Remini breaks down her must-watch list. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back. We absolutely love learning more about our friend Leah Remini. When she can't fall asleep, she turns to one particular show, and it just might surprise you. She spoke to us for our What I Watch series. When I have to fall asleep, when I can't fall asleep, I put on forensic files. Don't know why, listening to stories, people being murdered, gets me to sleep. That's probably, I mean, a psychologist would probably have an answer. It was a delivery he never expected. The older version of Forensic Files, the guy's voice, it's so soothing. And he's like, and then they found her decapitated. Something about the guy's voice. I don't know what it is. What I watch when I need comfort food is a reality show. Pick anyone, housewives of any state. Or I watch a Love Island, or I watch Below Deck. Basically, bravo. What I love about reality shows in general is that I just feel like it takes me away. Like, it's a mind vacation. I. I, I find myself not multitasking in my brain, like when I'm watching something um, that's you know newsworthy, I start to think about all the things I need to do in my life, things I'm not doing right. Um, I think I should be a better daughter, a better mother, a better this, a better aunt, a better sister, you know. But when I watch reality shows, it's almost like my mind is suspended. It is literally frozen. 
And I mean, I the picture of, I get of myself while I'm watching reality shows is just kind of drool, kind of, but it isn't. But I do, like that's what I picture myself doing because it's so mind numbing. My daughter Sophia got me onto Love Island, but only UK versions. Like she, you know, we find that to be the better versions of of, of Love Island. <laughs> it's a little riskier. Um, so I, I really tend to, to go to those or like I'll watch a marathon of like say yes to the dress. It's the not having to think about changing the channel or, you know, so it's usually if I see there's five, six, seven, eight seasons of something, I'm in because then somehow I like fall asleep and then I'm like, wait, well, how did I get on season four? And it's just anything that has multiple seasons. What I watch that might surprise people, I don't know that what I watch might surprise people. I do watch a lot of documentaries. I don't know that that's surprising to people, but when people talk about documentaries, they're like, you probably haven't seen this. I'm like, seen it. Like, I'll watch a documentary on uh, flies. Like, I just love documentaries. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just love uh, real stories. Sitting here traffic on the Queensboro Bridge tonight. I didn't need to prepare for the King of Queens because I am Carrie. Um, there's no need for me to prep. Oh, she's a girl from Brooklyn married to a neighborhood guy who has a crazy father in her basement. Like there was nothing I needed to prep for. I knew the character. I know the character very well. But you know what's funny about the King of Queens is that I remember um, our producers when I first got the role, we did a pilot and our executive producer was like, you know, why do you, why are you wearing makeup? And I was like, first of all, have you been to a borough in New York? Like, you know what I mean? Like Queens, Brooklyn, what do, like the idea of what a borough, per, like was like, they don't get their nails done. They don't wear makeup. And I was like, first of all, everything from a borough, like I'm from Bensonhurst. Don't tell me, like, I didn't have a lot of money growing up, but my stuff was coordinated. You know, like my outfits were matching the shirt, you know, back in my day, it was matching your shirt with your socks and like everything was color coordinated. So like the idea of what somebody from New York is like was so off that I was like, no, no, I, this girl gets her nails done. This girl gets her hair done. This girl, like, cause this girl is me. So. We're not doing sweatpants and, and I go, and by the way, if we wear sweatpants, it's color coordinated. What what I watch when I did a good cry? Oh my God. Terms of endearment. Um the notebook. Steel Magnolias. It's about friendships. It's about family. It's about um, losing people that you love. I mean, it's just, and the notebook just like, just kills me. I just, every time. There's not a time. And then um, Moulin Rouge. I know that sounds crazy, but I cry every time. Every time she dies. Every time. I've seen it 56 times, probably just in the last year. It's a wonderful life. Every holiday, crying. Every time, every time. What I watch with my family is anything my daughter wants to watch. It's not um, done by votes or even what her parents would want to watch because as they get older, they have their own rooms, they have their own computers, they can watch whatever they want to watch. So if my daughter says, I want to watch such and such, with you guys, I'm like, K okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Whatever she wants to watch, I'm like, I will watch. Thanks to Leah for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Well, there you have it. That was today's Pop Star Plus. Thanks for being here and join us again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye.
Vicki Wynn. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential Summer Safety Edition. Now we're going to talk about keeping safe this summer, but we're also going to tell you how to save on summer essentials. With inflation reaching record levels, we'll give you some tips to make your money work. But first, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says drownings usually spike during the summer, but these accidents are preventable. Here are some simple reminders. The unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 900 kids die each year from drowning in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages 1 to 4. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donohue. She's the senior aquatics director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips. It takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface. There are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water. Okay, I have my three girls waiting, eager to get into the pool, so let's go. We are all suited up, ready to go. Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her, it's 30 to 50 pounds. You wanna make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good. Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. You wanna make sure that they can independently submerge in the water. When they come back up, that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. Water first, water first. Okay, lay, lay, lay down. Okay, okay, okay. So Mary, what if you have a child that's not uh, really into being in the pool? And that's fine, just let them be comfortable in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in, having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through. And you wanna make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times. Tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. Now, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue can kick in. So set a timer to remind everyone to take a break and importantly, hydrate. With more on summer safety, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Vic. So Dr. Azar, let's talk about heat exhaustion. Yes. Let's get an idea of like, what are some of the warning signs we should be watching out for? So the number one thing, Vicki, is that people can either pass out or they have a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. Most of us don't have a digital thermometer on board, so others signs and symptoms to look for would be uh, confusion, headache, lightheadedness, dry skin. People think a lot, well, if you're overheated, you're going to be sweating a lot. Mm. No, people who have heat exhaustion will actually have very red, very hot, very dry skin. Couple That's a very good clue. For. Okay, so if you see someone who is experiencing that, what should you do? So the first thing to do is move them into a cool area, so a shady area under a tree, air conditioning if you can. We have some props with us yeah. here. Yeah. If you have the, um, uh, uh, if you're near ice packs, let's say you're at a picnic yeah, or something okay. like that, the places to put them under the neck, under the arm, in the groin, those are areas where a lot of blood vessels, that can okay. start to cool the temperature down. A big misconception is that you put people in an ice bath. Uh -huh. We don't want you doing that unless it was someone who has exertional exhaustion, meaning like a, a, an athlete who did a vigorous workout. Mm -hmm. They can go in an ice tub. Nobody else should go into an ice tub. And call 911. You should actually do that before you start initiating first aid because it is a medical emergency. Okay, that's good to know. So let's talk about prevention. How do you prevent yourself from becoming overheated? Well, it's really about dehydration. Mm -hmm. So obviously, 
sun exposure is the big one. And I think people often think, well, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and a lot of fluids, and that certainly can be beneficial. But you can also eat foods that have a lot or a high water content. Yeah. We're talking strawberries, uh -huh. peaches, lettuce in salads, watermelon, yeah. celery, cucumbers. What to avoid? Alcohol is a big one. Alcohol definitely dehydrates. And we have here our good old... Yeah, what about show. coffee? So we did think for a long time that caffeine acted as what's called a diuretic, uh -huh. meaning that it made you pee a lot yes. and that you would lose fluid that way. You really can't dehydrate yourself with caffeinated beverages really? on their own. Right. So if you're drinking an iced coffee, there's a lot of water in there too. So that's you okay. Enjoy your caffeinated beverages, but just keep an, keep an eye on how much you're sweating and how much you're taking in. And make sure you drink more water for alcohol. That's like an important rule, right? <laughs> okay. Alcohol in the sun is just a big no-no. I know, and but that it mixes a lot during the summer, so people got to pay really attention. Does. Let's talk careful. about this, the debate over spray sunscreen versus cream sunscreen. Yes. Is there a difference and is one better than the other? Right. So if you ask, most dermatologists will say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you actually apply. Mm -hmm. And you know this, Vic, mm -hmm. my kids are a little older now, yeah. but trying to have your fidgety kids stay still to apply lotion is not that easy. Right. So for a lot of us moms and dads out there, it is easier to spray. Okay. Spray is fine as long as the spray is actually getting onto the skin. So be aware of, of wind and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like to apply the spray and then make sure that you rub it in, but it's just as good SPF 30 or above. Okay. Reapply every two hours. Reapply, especially if you're doing vigorous exercise and, and sweating. sweating or mm -hmm. swimming. Every time you come out of the pool, you have to reapply and let it sink in for about 15 or 20 minutes before and you go back in the sun. If you're spraying, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated spot. In a, in a well-ventilated spot, yes. Okay, and I want to mention, obviously, you talked about you have we have hats and, of course, that sun protective clothing is important, too. Very. And you want to do, generally speaking, like colored light, okay. weight, hats, that kind of thing. If you can look through the piece of clothing, that's not thick enough, oh, right? You want to be able it's, it's okay. more like you want it to be more opaque, mm -hmm. light colored and light, but still that you can't see the light through it. Then you know you're pretty well covered. Dr. Natalie Azar, you are the best. Thank you Thank for covering you so sun much safety for having with us. us. Good to see ya. All right, well, still to come from grilling to fireworks, hacks to keep your family safe all season long, plus a warning about one of the top causes of boating-related deaths, what you need to know before heading out. And later, save or splurge, how to stretch your dollars on summer necessities. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. No doubt you've heard of carbon monoxide poisoning, but did you know it's also a concern out on the open water? The Coast Guard says it's among the top five causes of boating-related deaths each year. Our investigation reveals how quickly carbon monoxide gas can build up and what you need to know before your next boat trip. Go, go, go. Ali Sidlowski was the picture of health, a Division I soccer player at the University of Cincinnati. But last summer, after a day of boating on an Ohio lake, Allie went into the water for a dip. She never resurfaced. 911, where is your emergency? We're on East Fork Lake. Uh, a girl jumped in. She did not have a life jacket on. And she's not surfaced yet? No. The boat was running, and we think the carbon monoxide made her pass out. 
The coroner later confirmed the suspicion Ali's cause of death was drowning with a contributing cause of carbon monoxide intoxication. There's still part of us thinking that she's coming home. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. For the first time, Ali's parents, Dave and Tracy Sidlowski, shared their story. When you got the call and they told you your daughter had drowned, so what did you think? Well, I was confused because Ali knew how to swim. It didn't make sense. Her parents say Ali grew up swimming in their backyard pool. Did you have any concept that this was a possibility, that someone could die of carbon monoxide poisoning from a boat? 100%, no. 100%, no. The U.S. Coast Guard reports 41 incidents of boat-related carbon monoxide poisoning and five deaths in 2020. Experts say carbon monoxide from a boat's engine can build up, especially while the boat is idling or moving at slow speeds, creating an invisible cloud. That toxic gas can cause lethargy, headaches, nausea, too much, and it's lethal, which is why people should avoid breathing in the exhaust expelled from the engine, usually located in the back. The Sidlowski family attorney rented this boat, similar to the one Allie was riding, for our demonstration. Allie's friends on the boat that day say she was sitting in the back in an area called the swimming deck. You can see these look like seats, there are cushions, even a cup holder for drinks. But according to the boat maker, this is not a designated seating area. At the time, the Yamaha owner's manual said passengers must always sit in a designated seating area. This diagram highlights these seats as safe, but not the swimming deck. Yamaha also warns, stay away from the swim platform area while the engines are running. Exhaust gases coming from underneath it contain carbon monoxide. This is not a problem to be solved in the owner's manual, okay? There should not be seats in the danger zone. Attorney John Eustel filed a lawsuit on behalf of Ali's family. <laughs> To understand how quickly carbon monoxide can build up, I used this special meter. Anything above 200 parts per million and an alarm goes off. With the engine idling, it only took a few minutes. Wow, we're over 400, 500, 600, up to 700 now, climbing quickly. We're up more than 400, 500. This alarm is going off. Dr. Bill Benda is a professor of emergency medicine at Florida Atlantic University and an avid boater. He was with me for the readings. We were getting readings above 500, 600, 700 parts per million. What does that tell you about that area of the boat? That is definitely a danger zone and you should remove yourselves and your children from that area of the boat immediately. Do you think carbon monoxide poisoning incidents are underreported? Absolutely. And why is that? It's because someone comes to us and they don't tell us the circumstances around which they started feeling ill. And so we assume it's something much more simple and common, like dehydration, sun exposure, alcohol use, seasickness. Experts also warn you shouldn't swim near an idling boat. Look what happened when we took our meter to this popular swim spot in Florida. What are you seeing? 300 parts per million. Our producer, Joe Enoch, collected readings from the air around the Yamaha and other boats. Joe, I hear it going off. What are you getting? I'm getting 100 up to 400 parts per million. He even measured the air near these boaters who were stunned by the readings. We're getting readings of 300 and up. You see how far away we are from the boat engine? Did you know that this is something that could happen? I had no idea. That is crazy because every time we go to the sandbar, we leave the boat motor running so it could keep speakers running and stuff. Yamaha declined to be interviewed, writing, we do not make comments regarding current, pending, or possible litigation. After our story first aired, Yamaha updated their website with this graphic adding, warning, do not occupy the stern of the boat when engines are running due to the possibility of carbon monoxide poisoning and falling. As for the Sidlowski family, they hope Ali's legacy is one that saves lives. We can't bring our daughter back, but if we can try to save other people from having to go through this, we want to do our best to do that. It is preventable. Our thanks to the Sidlowski family for speaking to us. The CDC, Coast Guard, and Marine Manufacturers Association say swimming decks can be particularly dangerous when the engine is on because you're on top of where the engine vents and the exhaust. So this is a potential danger for any boat. You really want to pay attention to where you sit and whether you start feeling symptoms like nausea, headache, or sleepiness. And we should mention while shooting this story, we took multiple breaks away from the engines to keep ourselves and our crew safe. 
Well, one of my favorite holidays, 4th of July, but before you do anything, some must-see safety tips and hacks to make sure everyone has a great time while staying safe. It's the 4th of July, and that means summer. Time to head outside and enjoy the weather. And if you're like me, there will be a lot of grilling happening in your house, but are you using one of these to clean your grates? Well, the metal bristles work great for cleaning, but they can also come out of the brush and get stuck in your food. So here is a fantastic alternative, an onion. Yeah, an onion. Check it out. It works really well to get all that gunk off of the grates. And if you don't have an onion, another quick, easy trick, aluminum foil. Just take a ball and get to scrubbing. Also, as you're getting ready to grill that meat, make sure you keep it refrigerated. The USDA says anything that's uncooked left out for more than an hour in this summer weather could make you sick. Serving adult beverages at the party? I like to use two different color cups, red ones for the grown-ups and the alcoholic beverages, blue ones for the kid-friendly drinks. Here you go, ask me. That way, there is no confusion. And it just wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. If you're heading out to a big show, it's going to be amazing. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be loud. And if you are bringing your little ones, don't forget the ear protection. I like these ones. They go over the ears just like this. Jay's helping us out. Those feel OK, Jay? Awesome. And if you can't find those in time, well, these work just as well, the traditional earplugs. Now let's talk about the at-home fireworks. So much fun but they can also be incredibly dangerous. So before you light off those one, two, three goes or the rainbow shower, wow, this brings me back. Make sure you've done your homework. Fire extinguisher at the ready, have it out, know how to use it. And don't forget, sparklers, very fun, but even something as small as this can start a big fire. So have the bucket of water ready and when everything's done, extinguish it and you're safe. And of course, check to see if it's legal to light fireworks where you live. Here's a great tip for when you venture out into the crowds for fireworks. Use a temporary tattoo with your name and phone number so if your child gets lost, someone can call you right away. And you can get this temporary tattoo paper online, print it out at home, that's what I did. You don't have time for that. Permanent marker works just as well. Pool parties are always fun, but here's some tips. Be sure to designate a responsible and sober adult. I'll take that, thank you to watch the pool. As an additional safety measure, there's a number of high-tech tools that can help you in case of a potential pool safety incident. There's this bracelet by Safety Turtle, and it will sound an alarm the second your kid hits the water. And this is super loud. There's no way you're gonna miss this alarm. And it works for your pets, too, if your dog is not a strong swimmer, right, Peanut? And you've definitely heard this before, but don't forget about the sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen about every hour. We all have our phones with us all the time. Just set a timer, easy reminder. And a great rule of thumb for exactly how much sunscreen to use, the experts recommend a shot glass full. But really, you can never get too much. And just a reminder, every year animal shelters see an influx of pets who get spooked by the fireworks and run off. So make sure those tags on your pets are updated with your correct phone number and address. And also just keep your pets inside during the fireworks. All right, when we come back, your summer shopping guide, where to find the deals and later how to host the hottest summer get togethers. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? 
Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Allie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. As you know, consumers are facing record levels of inflation, but with a new season comes a need for certain items. So what should you buy now and what should you hold off on? Here with our summer shopping guide is Mary Beth Quirk. She's a shopping editor at Consumer Reports. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thanks for being here. So you and your team at Consumer Reports, you look at what's on sale all year round, mm -hmm. and you're here to tell me what we should maybe be buying right now. What, right. What's on sale? Yes, yeah, so our experts at Consumer Reports track prices on products, again, all year long. So June, some deep discounts were expecting to see things like drills and pressure washers mm -hmm. drills maybe aimed at your DIY dad for Father's Day sales there's gonna be some things you know maybe you can finally put that gazebo up in the yard that yeah. dad's been claiming he's gonna <laughs> um, some other things that make really good sense for summer like blenders I don't know who would pass up an icy drink outside yeah. maybe a nice fresh smoothie. and these are expensive so it's a good to buy them when they're on sale yes it's a good idea to look for them especially the full-size ones mm -hmm. you can get a personal blender it's a little smaller but full size is better for making those big batches of icy drinks and things um, smart speakers is a good yeah. one, a popular, you know, maybe you're outside, you're inside, you're cooking the barbecue, it's hands-free. Right. Cue the music, maybe you need them to look up something for some you. Some of them are waterproof too, right? Some, some speakers are waterproof, um, that's definitely not all, they can survive a little dunk in the pool, but you probably want to be careful okay. <laughs> around those anyway. And then some other, you know, big essentials, uh, we don't have a stroller, but strollers okay. are a good, it's a good time to buy those in June, maybe your kid's grown up a little bit, mm -hmm. or you want to get out and enjoy the weather. And then while you're enjoying that weather, of course, a staple is insect repellent and sunscreen. Um, this, of course, keeping the bugs away, yes. not said, ticks <laughs> in, can be really tricky. Mm -hmm. But sunscreen is really important because it expires about every three years. So you want to pull out last year's, or maybe you haven't bought some in a while, you haven't been to the beach, and just check it, make sure right. it's not expired, and then just go stock up on it. If you because if it's expired, it's not effective. It's not as effective. Talk to me about this. Obviously, we're seeing inflation hitting our pocketbooks every which way. Right. Are there tips you have on saving? for things that we need. So there are, the inflation's hitting a lot of people right now, a lot of summer activities, or maybe some of those hotter summer products, things that are really in demand right now, um, like air conditioners and stuff, that's gonna be a little bit harder. You just really need to plan things out and budget your purchases. Mm -hmm. You don't need to break the bank. There's plenty of times to save this summer, um, and we can get into some, of, some more of those as well. What are the other factors we should consider if we are trying to make a big purchase, hundreds or thousands of dollars? Right, so sure, the first thing, of course, is if you really need it right now. Mm -hmm. If something is broken, if your air conditioner broke, if your you know, large appliance broke and you can't get through to the end of the summer, you might want to go ahead and splurge on that right now. Um, but there are other sales coming up after June. Like I okay. said, we've got Father's Day coming soon. Then after June, um, the 4th of July sales is a great time for larger appliances, oh. mattresses often, and then we're expecting Prime Day. It has not been announced officially yet, but to be also in July. Yeah, usually that's in July, right? Right. You get a lot of cookware, clothing, like other electronics and things. You might see some of these on sales well then too, but that's those are some of the times you can wait for. All right, Mary Beth Quirk with Consumer Reports. Thank you so much for our summer buying guide. We appreciate you. Well, coming up, hacks to make the most out of summer from staying cool to being the hostess with the mostest. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? 
About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now that we know how to stay safe and what to buy and when to buy it, let's take things to the next level and make the most of what summer has to offer with hacks for staying cool and how to host the hottest get together. Melanie Berlier, the Spruce Group General Manager, she's here now to help us maximize our summer. Okay, welcome, Melanie. I'm going to bring us over here. Start off with uh, talking to us about these products and how can they help us with our summer plans. There are so many underrated ways to beat the heat this summer. When it comes to energy efficiency, one of the simplest things you can do is swap out all of your old bulbs oh. for the newer ones because they're more energy efficient mm -hmm. and they're not going to admit any heat throughout your home. Nice. So you save money on the bill and they're cooler. What about these devices here? The so the dehumidifier comes in handy because your air conditioning unit is working really, really hard to cool the air and remove moisture from the air. But if you have a dehumidifier oh. on site, the air conditioner isn't going to have to work as hard. Nice. Oh, I love that. Okay. And then finally, talk to us about the pillow and sheets here. Sure. So bedding is super important when it comes comes to your temperature control, mm -hmm. which impacts your quality of sleep. Yes. With a cooling pillow, you're actually going to remove heat from your body and get a better night's rest oh, during like the summer. like that. Yeah, it's so important to sleep yeah. with a cool pillow. And at the Spruce, we recommend really lightweight, 100% cotton sheets for the summer months. Okay, excellent. All right, my family loves to be outside. We can't wait to get out there, use our backyard. Tell us about different things that we can do to stay cool, stay hydrated, and have a good time. Sure, so a DIY bar cart is one of our favorite oh, things. Oh, that's a great it's idea. So easy to do, and it's a fan favorite. So you just need, in addition to the bar cart, you need a beverage dispenser mm -hmm. to display your batch cocktail of choice. Mm -hmm. You need super durable tumblers. Forget glass outdoors, please. Yeah. It's much safer to go with a durable plastic. And then you're going to want an ice bucket. If you're feeling next level, throw some succulents on there and a bowl of lemons and limes. And staying hydrated is important, so getting a big size, getting everyone the liquids that they need. All right, Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about staying safe when you're in the sun. We talked about sunscreen earlier and I think that's so vital. Yeah, one of our favorite things is that we recommend a sun protection station. Mm. You're going to want to include sun hats, sunglasses, and sunscreen that your family members or visitors can choose from. Okay, and then finally the sun goes down. You still want the party to continue. That's kind of the most fun because then it's cooler. Yes. What are some things to help us get through the summer nights? So we love lighting. Wicker lanterns, string lights are beautiful, but when it comes to insects, uh -huh. an insect yes. repelling cancer candle is going to do double duty as both a source of warm cozy vibes and a bug repellent. Okay and you know what we did we bought one of those giant outdoor fans which really helps to keep the bugs away as well. Yes those are a great idea too. I love this wicker lamp. All right Melanie what about outdoor movies that's becoming more and more popular. Backyard movie theaters are so easy to create and they're fun for literally everyone of all ages. All you need are a screen, mm -hmm. a projector, an audio system, a content source and a few cables and wires. You're like, all you need are these seven things. <laughs> but they're, they're pretty affordable these days, yes? They really are. And aside from the technical aspects, all you want to think about are food, seating, and maybe some mosquito netting. But definitely. Everyone has fun in a backyard movie theater moment. Melanie Burley, I thank you so much. So appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that is our time for all of us here at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. In the meantime, stay safe and cool.
Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Totally Turn it down. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good, and I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Now, culinary superstar Bobby Flay sharing his love of seafood from coast to coast. Today, we're going to be making crab cakes with an orange chive tartar sauce, and then try a West Coast-inspired crispy fried fish taco with a mango black bean salsa. I love tacos. I have a lot to learn about seafood, and I cannot wait to give this a shot. So let's get started. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. It's really Bobby Flay? It's really Bobby Flay. I mean, we have a long history together. Yes, we do. We've, you, we've made lots of food on the Today Show together. We have, and you've even been called in to try to teach me to cook a long time ago. Yes, and we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, guess what? It didn't stick, but now it is. I'm learning a few things. So I've been brought in to teach you, um, you know, a couple of things. Seafood, but also frying seafood. Okay, so what, what, what's our plan today? So the, so the plan today is, first we're going to shape the crab cakes make the tartar sauce, fry the crab cakes, make the mango black bean salsa, prepare the batter and fry the fish, plate and serve. We're gonna start by cutting a shallot. My instinct would be to cut off these edges. Yes, exactly, cut okay. off the edges. And then exactly. I know, I've learned that you should, when you have a round thing, you need to give yourself a flat edge. Yeah, so cut it in half. We're gonna make cuts in, in two different directions. First, oh. we're gonna go like this. Are we mincing? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make them very fine. Okay because this is actually gonna be in the crab cake and we're not gonna take it out. So we want it oh, to be- Good um, little bite size. Exactly right. The one thing I always tell people when, they're, when, they're, when they have a knife in their hand, don't daydream. Just think about exactly what you're doing at the very moment. Why exactly. would I daydream when being with you is a dream? Oh my goodness. Okay. Ding. Crab cake is over. Okay, I know. <laughs> I would, so I did that and now I may just chop chop. Nope, nope. Oh. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna take your, your hand. Oh and, right. Do you remember this? This kind of this thing, right? Hold yeah, it together. Exactly. I hate this. You hate <laughs> I hit well, too hard. And I had to hold it like this because otherwise it's splayed yes, out. That's ex that's okay. Exactly. And you and that and that's how you're gonna create a like a, a fine little, dice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is so unnatural. It is? You but look, look, at look, look how beautiful. Seat. It's gorgeous. Cute. Now, so if, if, you know, a couple of months ago, if somebody handed you a shallot, do you think you could get it diced like no, that? No, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to put our shallots in here. Okay. So neutral oil, like canola or something, or vegetable? Canola oil, vegetable oil. You know okay. what I've been using a lot of avocado oil. Whose big bit is this? I think that's mine. It's definitely yours, Bobby. I'll it's take not credit mine. for it. Okay. Okay. There's two different um, ways to saute. Uh, so, like in this case, we're sautéing the shallots. Yeah. With color, is sautéing, and sweating it is cooking it without color. Okay. So what we what we want to do is sweat this. Okay. So we're 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 softening the shallots. Mm -hmm. We're bringing out all the natural flavors. You can smell how delicious it that is. It smells so good. Because. Dumb question alert. How do I know it's soft if I can't touch it? It's too hot. Well, you, you're feeling it with your. Yeah. Um, you can also you can also taste it. Oh yeah, they're big on tasting. <laughs> they're big. Really opens up the pores. It still tastes hard to me. Okay, so then keep sauteing them. Okay. And they're starting to get a little color, so let's be careful. Okay. All right, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. I'm turning it off. Great. All right, so we're going to put this into our bowl. Oh, we forgot to have a toast. Oh my goodness. Bobby! We're drinking already. I know, that's how we do on this show. Ginger beer margaritas. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Whoo! Got a little kick to it. Yes, I like it. Does. it. Yes, I it like does. It. All right, now that we're liquored up, what do okay. we do next? You, how are you with zesting? Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> okay, just be careful. You don't want to, like, zest your fingers. This is an ongoing thing. I don't know if I'm right or left. Can I, can I, can I show you, can please, I show you something? Would you okay, please? yes, okay. So you can do this one of two ways. You can actually do it like this. Oh, I've never seen that. And what happens is the zester then captures the zest there, and you can go just go oh, like I that. Oh, I like that. You like that? Yeah. Okay, let me try, that. try that. Well, just be careful with it. They are sharp. <laughs> this is painful for you, isn't it? No, it's not at all. How much? Can I be done That's testing? Enough. That's okay. enough. Well, well, we, we need lemon, lemon too. Okay. Yeah. Can I be done zesting? <laughs> oh I've God. had enough of zesting. Zesting. <laughs> Death by zesting. Has Think... the zester ever killed anyone? Okay. I don't know. All right, that's enough lemon. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Avoid all recipes with zesting. There will be no zesting. Who okay. needs zest? No. Okay. Now, um, 
We're going to take all this mayonnaise. Okay. And the mayonnaise obviously is going to give it some richness. Mm -hmm. Every, like mayonnaise always tastes good. And yeah. also it's going to help uh, find the, uh, the crab cake itself. Okay. We're going to take one tablespoon, which is that measure yes. of, of horseradish. Okay. Horseradish has a good zesty flavor to it. It does. Makes your sinuses open up. Exactly it does. I love horseradish. Me too. Uh, How much of that? The one tablespoon of uh, whole grain mustard. Okay. And the thing I like about whole grain mustard is obviously it's going to have that little mustard bite. Yes. And um, <laughs> I just. I, you know what I love about you? This is like the measuring is a guide, which honestly, I, I actually like that because we're not baking, so it doesn't have to be well, exact. That's like funny because that's one of the hardest things for me to get used to is that it doesn't have to be all perfect. Especially when you're not baking. Yeah. Okay. okay. And half then, tablespoon of whatever this is. Uh, what is it's this? actually half, half tablespoon of Calabrian chilies. They're hot. Mm. Yes. Toss all this crab in here. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, where did you get this at the store? This is uh, Maryland Jumbo Lump Crab Meat. Mm -hmm. It's already cooked and it's already clean. Okay. It's, it's not cheap, but it's it's a great product. Yeah. We don't want to mix it yet okay. because we want the crab to stay, you know, in, in pretty big pieces. Okay. You know, you paid money for that texture. Yeah. We don't want to destroy it. Okay. Right. How are you with seasoning? I think one of the things that separates a home cook from a professional cook is how aggressive they season. Okay. And, I, and I'm talking about just salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. So this is kosher salt, which is what I always use. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up kosher salt in your fingers, mm -hmm. you can feel it. Yeah. And when I season with kosher salt, I crush it in my fingers and then I just go like this. Okay. Should and I add more? Add some more. Exactly. Ooh, and more then, or no? And then pepper. More. Okay. And like. How's that? More. Oh. Now we're going to take two tablespoons of Wonder Flour. Now what is Wonder Flour? What one, is so it's one draw. Oh, it's one not wonder, wonder. I wonder what wonder yeah. is. There you go, wonder flower. Jump it in. Yes. So wonder flower is kind of sprinkle it around. Wonder flower is um, it's already steamed and cooked, so it's oh. going to dissolve a lot easier than say all-purpose flour, which is still raw. Oh, okay. okay. And this is what's going to help bind our crab cakes. Now we're gonna we're gonna you can you can start to fold it in, mm -hmm. and I want you to fold as opposed to stirring. All right. I remember folding from baking. Exactly. See, this is starting to look really good. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about these crab cakes, Savannah, is that we walk a tightrope in terms of whether or not they're going to hold together. And what we're doing is we're giving up the idea of adding lots of breadcrumbs and lots of filler mm -hmm. and keeping it about the crab. But at the same time, we want it to stay together. So we're not using those crutches. We're not using the crutches. So we want flavor. So this is where um, we're gonna get we're gonna have to get our hands dirty. How do you feel about that? I, I feel good if I'm wearing these gloves. Oh my goodness! Spice it's not very so. glamorous, but I'm gonna go with. Okay, it. no, I see, I know. Okay, so I'm just making a little ball. So yeah, so you, so you make a ball like, like this. A round ball, okay. To I start, it'd be flat. almost like a meatball, but then what I do is I I make it into almost like a burger. Oh. Okay. How's that look? Should I make it a little flatter? Like yeah, yours? like that. See if you can make it like that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay, let's see if we can tell who's this who's. Okay, that's definitely the professional. Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> yes, we most certainly can. When did you start cooking? How did you learn? I started cooking when I was 17 years old. Oh. I dropped out of high school. Wow. And I went to work in a restaurant because I needed a job. And I've been doing the same thing every day. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it's 10 years later. <laughs> wow. It's been a decade. You look so young. <laughs> Thanks. Do okay. these cook or chill or what? They're gonna, ch <laughs> they're gonna chill. Okay. So they, and, and chilling them is actually one of the things that's gonna help hold them together. Okay. Okay. So you want to put them in the refrigerator? I will. They look so good. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Okay. All right, tartar sauce time. Let's All right, do so, it. so chives are in the onion family. Mm-hmm. Um, I love chives, and I like to I like to cut them, like I like to cut the edge off. What edge? Like I just I like to cut the edge off like yeah, this. Yeah, I don't like those friends. And then okay. and then start here. Okay. So then you have a nice 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 even edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then again, just kind of that rocking method. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to work. I'm trying just to hide my fingers like you. Talk. Very very as fine as you can get them. Okay. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Okay. Don't daydream. I know. Trust. That's really good. Thank you. And also incredibly consistent. Oh, good. I'm so delighted. I mean, look at that. Okay. That's really, really good. I love it. And do we have enough? Um, yeah. Okay. Between the two of us, I think okay. we have plenty. All right. Just throw it all in? Yeah, toss okay. it in there. So sure. now we're going to stir everything okay. together. So we're going to start with some orange zest. Okay. Now that you're a professional yeah, zester. Exactly. Uh, we have some capers that are chopped mm, up. Okay. Okay, good, nice, salty flavor. It seems chunky and, for a sauce. But it's a, it's a, it's a tartar sauce. Okay. And, and, and it's, it, it has texture, which is great. So these are the um, cornichon or oh. gherkins, as you like to call gherkins. them. Gherkins. They're, they're pickles. They're oh. baby, baby pickles. I love a baby yeah. pickle. Chef tax. Orange oh, juice. Orange, orange juice, really? Orange juice, yeah. Okay. And then salt and pepper, always. Oh, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle technique. Crush. Crush and sprinkle. Two tablespoons of that vinegar. Ooh. Just do it by eye. Okay. I do it by do eye. It. Do it by. You do can you do promise? it. Promise. I promise. I, I'm right. I'm standing right here. Okay. Perfect. That's one. A little more. That's two. Good. Really? God, so, I feel like a pro. Killing the game. So you're just gonna mix this all together mm-hmm. um, until it's well incorporated, mm-hmm. and then. You know, we'll, we'll let this sit for like a half an hour. We have a lot of flavors in there. They, we just want all the flavors to kind of melt together. Looks Here, good. You, you have to taste this. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can make sure you're happy with Especially all the seasoning, et cetera. Okay. Oh, that's good. Who is that little, that thing? Yes, exactly. That, that's, the, that's the pickling, uh, that, that's the, um, as you like to call them, the gherkins or the cornichon. <laughs> we can leave it at room temperature. Okay. Um, you just put a little in the, ser- in the serving bowl mm-hmm. so it looks nice and pretty. Yeah. And we can save the rest for later. Okay. If there's any leftover. Mm, great. All right, perfect. Let's make some crab cakes. Okay. Should I go get them? Please do. This is so fun. You're doing so much of the work. <laughs> we're gonna take some wondra flour. Wondra. Okay? How much wondra? Make sure we have. I enough. wonder how much wondra. <laughs> okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. And, and this. This is something that you should know in general. When you're doing a dredging station, like yeah. if you're making cutlets of chicken where it's like yeah. flour, egg. Breadcrumbs, mm-hmm. you season every layer. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, stir it around mm-hmm. so it's just seasoned. Mm-hmm. And then, so basically, what we're going to do is now, this is, you have to be very gentle here, Svenna. We have the crab cakes, they're nice and chill. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to kind of go like this. Very just top and bottom, or should I get the sides? You can get the sides too. Okay. Okay. You're going to drop it right in there? We're going to drop it right in. Let okay. me show you. So basically, a good, a good way to do that is like this. Okay, and they're gonna fry. The frame, so you wanna do the same thing. Out. So okay, like, gentle, yeah, very gentle. Treat them with kid gloves, so to mm-hmm. speak. Mm-hmm. Okay, you does know? that seem good? Yep, put it on there and just very carefully, don't drop it. Don't be mad. Beautiful. What we're trying to accomplish is creating a nice crust on the outside on all parts of the crab cake. Okay. And it's gonna take about three minutes on each side. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to flip these over. because. Yeah, at some yes. point. Okay. We're gonna flip this in a few seconds. Okay. Now, again, you want to be careful here. And what I what I like to do is kind of like turn it away from me. Oh. So if it splatters, it goes that way as opposed to this way. Okay. And see, look, nice and crusty. It looks nice. And we didn't. It didn't fall apart. No. Or yeah. If this falls apart, I'm gonna die. No, it's not gonna fall apart. Just be a good crab cake. All right. Hey. I know, but you did it right at you. Oh. Just be careful. Okay. Go, go, you know. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so move move this one over here. Okay. Okay. Now this guy. So this guy, here's what you can do. You can just use this guy mm-hmm. as the as the, uh, as the as the background. Okay. Right, exactly. But, use him to flip it over. Okay. And then, I'm gonna, oh, come on now. Now they're friends. They right. don't want to get apart. Okay, now flip it this way. Flip it. 
this way. Yeah. But I find that to be hard. Okay. Oh no, it's falling apart. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, Bobby, we got a loose crap piece. No, it's okay. What do we do? There's one little crap piece. All Don't right. worry about it. You know what? Whew. Here's the thing. They'll know they're homemade. Yes. That, and that's really good. That's a really good thing. That's true. All right, so basically now we're gonna start to take these out and we're gonna put them on a paper towel yeah. so that they just drain a little bit. Draining. Okay. Should I go for it? Yeah, go for it. Can't lose another one. Gorgeous. This is Bobby's. The good one. The good one. Put this on your plate. Nice. Can I use my finger? Yeah. Yes. And then this is the number two. Yep. That one. Yeah, hold on. Nice job. Mm -hmm. This is the problem child. Okay, this guy wants to fall apart. Don't do it. Don't fall It looks apart. great. It does. It looks it's great. It's gonna taste good. All right. A little salt and pepper on top mm -hmm. while it's still while it's still warm. I'm doing it. Is that too much? No, I'm doing your... That's fine. We have crab cakes. Um, and then we're gonna put them on here. Okay. Come on, bring them on over. Nice. Gosh, these look really good. Don't they? Yeah. Nice and crusty. Oh, and hot. Look at that. Okay. I'm gonna put this Gorgeous. on the table. Gorgeous. Yes, put it on the table. Are you so proud of us? I am very proud of you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped applying, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low will pass them by. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We're going we're gonna to fry some fish, but before we get into that, let's make our black bean mango salsa. Prioritizing what you do first, second, third, etc. in any meal is really important. But we, we know that we can make the black bean salsa, the black bean and mango salsa ahead of time. Let it sit, have it done, because the fish, when we cook it, then we want to eat. We're going to start by uh, dicing an, uh, an onion. We need half of a red onion. Okay. That's going to be good enough for government work. Here we go. Exactly. I'm not going to beat Bobby Flay today. No, you're not. But these look really good. Well, let's do the mango next. Okay. Mango yeah. is a very tricky fruit. It's a very tricky fruit. Um, first of all, when you pick a mango, you want it to be ripe. You want it to have some give as you kind of okay. push your thumb into yeah. it. Making these stand up is really important. And then you're going to go up down both sides of the mango so that you get these two lobes. One like oh. this. And then one like this. No pit, no pit, no pit. Yeah, the okay. pit is in there. Okay, and then you, I'm trying and then, to avoid the pit. And then, of course, you can, you can go around the sides to get these little pieces as well. Yeah. You don't want to lose. I can't see where that. Pit and then basically, this is like the pits in here. But I just eat this. Oh, mm. I like that. So good, so ripe. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make like a, almost like diamonds in the in the in the mango. You don't want to mm -hmm. cut all the way through, just to the skin. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna turn it, and you're gonna go this way. Oh, I'm making like a little. I actually cut an avocado sometimes like this. Yes, exactly right. You can scoop the you can scoop the mango. Mm -hmm. Right with a spoon. Oh, look at that. Okay. There's a handful of different ways to cut a mango. I think this is like 
I think this is the prettiest way and, and the easiest way. That's now, some cool. of my pieces are kind of big. And Don't worry about it. Okay. We're making tacos. Everything's going to be fine. Exactly. I use canned black beans all the time. They're always cooked perfectly. Good. Strain them out, throw them in there. Good, because I didn't want to make beans. Okay. okay. I didn't want to make beans, so you're not going to make beans. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we Pour have... the margarita. No, I'm just no, no. Okay. <laughs> Well, That'd close. Good. yeah. Close. The lime juice. Lime juice, yes. okay. Okay, now, now a couple of more things we're going to mm -hmm. put in here. Some honey. Okay. How much? Um, I don't know. Open it up. Let's do this. Oh, boy. Let's do this. Uh, pour some in. Gonna, pour some in. Yeah. What does that even mean? That's good, right? A little more. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Whatever oh. you say, honey. I actually I forgot one more thing. Oh. We, have, we have we have to put the, the jalapeno in. Oh, there. okay. We have to we have to dice that. Okay. Okay. Let's cut the stem off. Cut it in half lengthwise. Okay. okay. You're gonna take the inside pith mm -hmm. and the uh, and the seeds out. So now we just have the the flesh of the pepper. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna turn it upside down. Yeah. Flatten it. Push it down, and then you're yeah. gonna dice it. Put some olive oil in there. How much? It says one quarter cup. Fire away. Can I measure Go. it? No. I want okay. you in the bowl. Okay, okay, I'm in I the bowl. I want you in the bowl. I'm present. Exactly. Because that seems this, like, okay, that seems like a, is that enough? A little more, because you feel like you're doing it, okay? Yeah. That's good. good. Okay. And, then, and then you're gonna season this with salt and pepper, because we season everything with salt and pepper. Yes. Look okay. at you. Look at I'm doing your technique. A little more? A little, little something salty, and then, and then that's good. Okay. And then some black pepper. Okay. And stir. Stir this up. Okay. This is looking good. All right. Some of my big mango chunks are a little aggressive, but it's good. It actually looks very good. I'm gonna add some cilantro. How do okay. you feel about cilantro? Um, I like the flavor. I've never chopped it or anything. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Make a little room on your board. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the flowers off the stems. Okay. Like all these leaves, you mean? The leaves, yeah. That's the part of cilantro that you want to eat. Okay, that's good. Okay. So then just kind of... Make it into a pile like this, and you're going to coarsely chop it. So you put your hand on top of the knife, and you just kind of rock back and forth, right? And, you, and then you kind of go this back and forth That's this fun. way. This makes me feel like I'm on a cooking and just, show. And, and, and put it back into a pile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it sounds good. That's coarsely chopped herbs. Okay. As opposed to finely chopped. Okay. Nice and coarse. Throw them in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going we're gonna to stir this up. Stir it. You okay. taste it and tell me what you think. Okay. Mmm, I like it. Do you think it needs anything? Underneath. I okay. think it needs a little more salt. Okay. And this is the way you cook. If you're not chewing, mm -hmm. you're not cooking. Mm -hmm. It's also beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. Next step. Next step. Let's let's fry some fish. Let's do it. And, what I like to do before I deep fry, what? take a big deep swig. Okay, let's do Should it. Should we do it? Yes, absolutely. It's the deep cheers. fry swig. Okay. So instead of the deep <coughs> beer batter. I love that you drink first and then cheers. Well, <laughs> you, I didn't know we were choosing. You, you were prepping. Okay. Like a bad okay. Form. So let's let's get let's start okay. with rice flour. Okay. okay. How much? So we're gonna do equal parts. So do one cup, do equal parts of water, and you're going to okay. whisk. Lee, what we're trying to achieve here mm -hmm. is a very light batter, mm -hmm. so that it has some crispiness, but you can definitely see and taste the fish. Okay. Okay. That's the key. Now you told me that fish that fried doesn't have to be bad for you. But I isn't mean, frying like just terrible? Well, well, f frying can be bad for you if, if, like, for instance, the the oil is is not it's not hot enough, mm -hmm. and it and then it seeps in throughout all the protein. Oh. But if it's just crisping the outside of it and repelling it, then mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Okay. Now, how's that? Okay. So that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of of this of this rice flour, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use this as a dredge, kind oh. of like, you know, but, we, yeah. we we don't even have to measure it. All right. We just, we can just and then we're gonna season every, every layer as mm -hmm. we said. Remember. Look at my. Heavy hands. I know. Are you seasoning more now than ever before? Yeah, especially with your eyes on. I, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. How's that? It's good. Now, should the fish I? Too. Do I need to whisk? Oh my Season gosh, the fish. Really? Yes. Jeez. We don't want. We don't want bland foods. No, Madeline. I do not. But geez, that's a lot. I would. Be, I would just be afraid of that's you good. Like, over salt. That's good. No, nope, pepper too. Yep. Okay. That's a that's a thick, dense piece of fish. We okay. want. We want to taste it. But I didn't have through. to do both sides. That's fine. Side. That's okay. totally fine. So okay, so we're gonna dredge this. Meaning we're gonna take the fish, make sure and, and hit it on all sides mm -hmm. on the flour. On in the flour first. Flour first and then. Or oh, yes, I would have done this, then this. No, because this is actually going to hold on to this. Okay. All right, so should I use tongs or just use my you, use your hand. Okay. All right, so roll dredging. It around. Yeah, roll it around. All sides kind of yep. deal? Okay. Yep. And then and then pat it so that you get the excess off. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Like that? Yep. And in here? Yep. I don't want to be careful. Okay. Let's just do this. Yeah, with me. Okay. 
365 degrees. Okay, there's Let's, that thermometer. Now you can, okay. do the, you can do the rest okay, of them. Okay, let me do And this is going to be a very, very light batter, mm -hmm. nice and crispy. I hope you don't like that shirt because I'm okay. getting flour all over it. No problem. Okay, well, send me your bill. I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> That's what I recommend. I love coming to your kitchen. There's always alcohol in it. <laughs> I know. Savannah's Syrupy Kitchen. You're doing great. I love the technique. Okay. And also, like, you're, 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 you're moving really well in the kitchen. All right, so we're going to let this cook for about five minutes okay. total. And then we have a wire rack there so that the oil drips through to the bottom. Okay. Just be very gentle and also be very careful. It's very hot oil. You can't even see anything. I don't even know if I'm getting one. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah, see? Okay. See, it's like a stealth-like batter. Just yes. touch that. Okay. Nice and crispy. Did Some I get enough on there? You did great. Let's get the fish out of the pot. Okay. <laughs> it's been five minutes. Is this Beautiful. look right to you? Yep, put it on the uh, tray. Looks great. Look okay. at that. That's gorgeous. It does. Ooh, did, I, got, I didn't stick the landing. Yet. So great. Okay. It so looks light nice. and crispy. It really does. Here are your two favorite friends. Oh, jeez. Here we go. A again. little salt and pepper. Okay. Just on top while it's still hot and the oil's still warm. Oh my gosh, I really overdid that one. Well, that's a salt. It's okay. And also, when you season, you want to season from up here. Why? Because otherwise, you're going to have clumps of salt. Well, that's what I it's did. Too get. close. You're right. Exactly. Well, that's what happened. Beautiful. Ooh. This looks nice. Can we Done. eat? Yes, let's eat. You get okay. the fish, I'll get the salsa. All right. Let's do it. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Look at this feast we've made. Fantastic. But it's not it's not just your TV. I actually learned something I know. today. I know. How are you gonna do create your fish taco? Okay, so we have some tortillas here. Yeah. Nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like a nice tortilla. Um, I'm going to teach you a secret. Don't okay. take the one on the top. Take the one in the middle because oh. it's more pliable. Oh, how interesting. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I take a little avocado relish. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. the fish on top. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, my gosh. A little mango salsa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. This looks so good. Right? Yeah. And then what I like to do is just kind of squeeze a lime on top. Oh, yeah. You can take a little cilantro, mm -hmm. maybe just a sprig, and put it on top. You can just pick up your tortilla, mm. and you have a fish taco. Oh my gosh, this is a big bite. Turn the camera away. It's well, you, you taste taste the fish. You know, okay. it's like. Okay. Mm. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. Don't look at me. It's but so good. It's light and crispy. Mm. You did a great job cooking the fish. And this is obviously great for, you know, to make a taco. But also, like, you can also do, like, serve it as, you know, fish and chips. Oh, my kids would love that with this ketchup. Yeah. Just remember this. Flavor is very important, but contrast of texture is, is just as important okay. in, in eating and cooking. All right, I gotta try this uh, crab cake mm. now. Mm. That is so good. It tastes like crab. It tastes like crab. And that's the cake. I just say that's the best crab cake I ever had. Best crab cake you ever made. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Only crab cake I ever made, but yum, that is delish. Mm. And I love this chunky tartar sauce. This is delicious. I am so proud of myself. 
I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank Cheers. Thank you. You've been on a long journey with me, Bobby. Savannah, invite me back anytime. I'm here to teach. I I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Each week, I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day, the great outdoors. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock and we are back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Summer is heating up and whether you're headed to hike, surf, or just lay on the beach, I've got everything you need to enjoy the great outdoors. From lanterns that are gonna take your trip from camping to glamping, to a car adapter that will keep the kids entertained for the entire road trip. I cannot wait to get started. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Okay, so no one likes mosquito bites or smelly repellent spray, so this first pick is a game changer for those days outside in the summer. According to the brand, they are deep-free mosquito repellent patches. They are peel and stick patches that are made with plant-based ingredients like citronella and peppermint essential oils, and they're waterproof. The brand said they repel mosquitoes for three feet for up to six to eight hours, so you can spend more time outside. The brand also says that they're pediatrician approved and safe enough for kids to use. All you have to do is peel one of these stickers and you can put it on your shirt or even your bag to stay protected all day long. I am so excited for summer road trips. And if you are gonna have a car full just like mine, this little car gadget is gonna come in handy when everyone's electronics need a charge on the go. The car power inverter has two AC 110 volt outlets and four USB port chargers. And it's so compact and lightweight, so you can charge all of the family's essentials like laptops, tablets, and cell phones. All right, and whether you are camping or hitting the beach, this next one is a two-in-one gadget you're gonna love. It is a lantern and a phone charger that actually folds down flat and then pops up when you need to use it as a lantern. It has a small solar panel so you can recharge it in a pinch when you're out in the sun. But when it's blown up, it's so lightweight that even the kids can use it. And according to the brand, it's 100% waterproof. And in the dark, this is what it looks like. Okay, this next one you guys have to see to believe. It is an inflatable couch air lounger that provides portable lounging wherever your outdoor adventure takes you. Did I mention you don't even need a pump to blow it up? You guys have to see this. It only takes a few minutes and all you have to do is take it out of this cool little carrying case that it comes with, unclip it, and then whisk it through the air to inflate it. The trick though is to trap air by closing the sleeve opening little by little. So once it's blown up, according to the brand, it stays that way for up to five or six hours. Plus, it has a pillow-shaped headrest, so you get support from head to toe. And yes, I've tried it, and I actually think it's pretty comfortable. Another summer-friendly must-have is a pair of lightweight, waterproof sneakers. From cruises to beach trips, these are a versatile sneaker that you're gonna wanna wear if you're outdoors near some water. These are great because the brand says that these have an anti-slip outsole with a strong track adhesion. So when you're wet, they're comfortable and you can wear these as walking shoes as well. Because according to the brand, they dry pretty quickly. Okay, so this umbrella is one of those finds I didn't know I needed until I found it. It is called the Sportbrella and it is a clamp-on shade canopy that provides shade wherever you need it. It has a unique heavy duty universal clamp that you can use on square and tube shaped surfaces. So what does that mean? You can clamp it on anything from a beach chair to a golf bag and even benches. It's also really unique because it has a 360 degree swivel, two button hinges, so you can get shade wherever you need it. And if that wasn't enough, this umbrella, according to the brand, it's made with a UPF 50 material that's gonna provide some serious sun protection. 
All right, and from fashion to backyard fun, I bet you've been wondering why there's a huge rainbow behind me. Well, this rainbow arc will make your home the place to be this summer. It's a large inflatable sprinkler that all the kids in the neighborhood are absolutely gonna love. And you don't need a huge yard to get in on the fun. It's about four and a half feet tall and five and a half feet wide. So it's perfect for the kids to have fun in the sun without the need to drive to the pool or the beach. Let's run through the products one more time. The Evolve Together Mosquito Repellent Patches, the Car Power Inverter, the Luminate Solar Lantern, the Wikapo Inflatable Lounger, the Quick Drying Water Shoes, the Sportbrella, and the H for Happy Gigantic Rainbow Sprinkler. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that is it for our editor's picks. Up next, Mako in Logu is talking to dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb, who is sharing her favorite skincare products to protect your skin in the great outdoors. Plus, she'll spice up your outdoor adventures with some makeup products to keep you looking fresh all day long. Don't go away. Who meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel calm? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. The warm weather is upon us and people everywhere are looking to soak up some sun. Now, if you want to update your beauty routine for the warm weather, boy, do I have products that are just right for you. Whether you're planning a day trip or a road trip, most of us are looking to protect our skin while also looking for that grand adventure. So I've brought in expert dermatologist, Dr. Angela Lamb to share her favorite buzzworthy products for the great outdoors. Dr. Lamb, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so when it comes to being outdoors, what are some top essentials for staying safe in the sun? The main essentials for staying safe in the sun are sunscreen, 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 and sun avoidance. So you don't wanna be in the sun between the hours of usually 10 a.m. 
to 2 p.m. They say if your shadow is actually shorter than you, mm -hmm. that means the sun is really too high. Oh. Yeah, also, also if you um, are out, you wanna wear some protective clothing, you wanna do broad brim hats, mm -hmm. you wanna wear long sleeve clothing. Actually, a lot of clothing has SPF in it now. So those are really some of the mainstays to staying safe in the sun. That's good to know. I'm gonna spread that to my entire family. I did not know that. Now we all go to the dentist and we go see our family doctor, mm -hmm. but how often should we be going to see our dermatologist? Most people should check in with their dermatologist yearly. Um, sometimes it depends on your risk factors. So if you have lighter skin, if you spent more time in the sun, if you've had a lot of blistering sunburns, you might want to go every six to nine months. Oh. But most folks, especially over about the age of 30, need to check in yearly. Yearly, okay, good to know. I'm gonna add that to my calendar. All right, let's get into some of these picks. I'm so excited about everything you brought. So let's start with the first one. So this sunscreen, I'm fascinated. The fact that it's like an oily substance, Tell me about it. So what I love about this Melee sunscreen is that it's actually an oil base. It doesn't have mineral oil, but it's clear, it's sheer. You can put it on, you can put it on under makeup, um, and it really provides that great SPF. And as you apply it, you see how it has a sheen, yeah. but it creates good moisture without leaving any white cast. That's some of the biggest feedback I get from patients yeah. about sunscreen, is they don't like that white chalky feel. And this, look at how great that just blends into your skin. I mean. um, you get the moisture, you get that glow, um, without clogging your pores. That's what I love about it. It's so beautiful. I love this sheen. I'm obsessed with yeah. that already. Now, can everybody <laughs> use this? I know it's maybe for black and brown people. Melee is a brand that actually was formulated for melanin-rich skin, but yeah. I like people to know that this is great for any skin type. All right, let's move on to the next product here. I love that this mineral sunscreen has no cast as well. What mm -hmm. other benefits does this mm -hmm. one have? So what's great about this Bliss Sunblock is that it is mineral-based. So the key with mineral-based, there's pretty much two different types types of sunblock you can have. A chemical-based sunscreen or sunblock or a mineral-based one. This one is fully mineral-based, which is good for the coral reef, all of those types of things. Patients ask me about that a lot. They want to make sure that the sunblocks are good for the environment. Mm -hmm. But what's great about this one is the way they've processed it, like you said, no cast either. So if you try that one on, yeah. um, you're not going to have that white cast. It's good for all skin types. It also has an ingredient in it that actually absorbs oil and actually makes your pores look smaller. Yeah. Um, so that's like a two for one. That's a win-win yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Now there's a misconception. Can we talk about this elephant in the room that yeah. black and brown folks don't have to oh, wear no. sunscreen? <laughs> we have to wear sunscreen if we're having those grand adventures Absolutely. outdoors, right? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, even though skin that's darker does have some built-in SPF protection, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we don't need extra. So it's only about SPF 13 you get when you have darker skin. So this, for example, is SPF 30. You need that extra sunblock and that's what's gonna to prevent us from looking old faster. So that's really the key. Dr. Lamb, thank you for clearing that up. And by the way, you may have earned a commission on a Bliss products on your site. Let's move on to this eyeshadow stick. I want to look fresh when I'm out there in the great outdoors. Tell me about this one. All right, so what's nice about this, you put it on um, and in a little bit of time it sets and you can get in the water and you can be out there. Nobody wants to be in the sun or exercising or sweating and having their makeup running all over their face. So this one is great. It really has staying power. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, people want to look glam when they're on the beach, out in the sun. And so this is really formulated exactly for those purposes. But look at the color payoff as well. I know, they have a broad range of colors. Yeah. So you don't have to sacrifice sacrifice beauty for convenience and safety, so that's important. <laughs> I love how small and portable it is. Yeah. All right, let's move on to other makeup products as mm -hmm. well. When it comes to applying makeup for the great outdoors, right, it's sometimes you wonder, is it light and breathable? Is this one light and breathable? So this MAC foundation is light and breathable. I mean, a lot of people know MAC for their staying power, their ability to hold up under lights, camera action, yeah. um, but this one also holds up in the water, which is really fantastic. Um, and it is breathable, is light, and again, also, you're not going to find it all over your shirt mm -hmm. um, because it sets as well. Look at how it is just melting into my skin. Absolutely love this one. So Dr. Lamb, I have a confession. Mm -hmm. I've actually never used self-tanner before. <laughs> how does this work? All right, so the way self-tanner works is you apply it. There's a chemical compound in there, and if you apply it day after day, particularly this one, which gives you that gradual glow, so after about five to seven days, you're going to get some increased pigment, um, a nice glow. As a dermatologist, we always say the 
only safe tan is from a bottle, okay? <laughs> okay. So that's the only kind of tan I ever want anybody of any skin type to get. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, this is gradual, so you're not gonna have those streaks that you sometimes can get with some sunless tanners, and it'll just give you that nice, ready to be out in the sun, but again, safely tan. I love this, and I love how also that anyone can use this, mm -hmm. right, because I just put it on my hands, and I love how it just blends right in seamlessly, too. Mm -hmm. That's the key for so many of these products. We don't want to have you do a lot of work. We want it to be a seamless and have you able to enjoy the sun in the summer. I can't wait for that. All right, so sunburn is one of just the most annoying <laughs> things ever, right, that you can experience. How does this product here from Clarence help to soothe the skin? Yes, so first, I mean, for me, a dermatologist, that's like sacrilege. I never want to have somebody come in and say that they got a burn. But if you did, ideally you will have used some of these first two products to avoid that. But if you do, um, you want something that's going to be soothing, cooling. This product has a lot of aloe in it. So aloe has a very high water content, um, which is going to be soothing for you. And one little trick I say is to put that in the refrigerator before you apply it. So when it's actually physically cool, that helps as well. Okay, so do you use this before you get the sunburn or you use it after? No, technically you're supposed to use it after. It's okay. actually called after sun. But again, hopefully you've done the right things. You've applied your sunblock. You want to always apply it about 20 minutes before you go outside. You've mm -hmm. worn your hat. You've avoided the sun. It smells great as well. Mm -hmm. Liam, I love all your selections. I am ready to get out there and just be out there on my great adventure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Oh yeah, our pleasure. Now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the Melee No Shade Sunscreen Oil, the Bliss Black Star Sunscreen, the Cargo Cosmetics Swimmables Cream Eyeshadow Stick, the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Radiant Sheer Foundation, the Jurgens Natural Glow Self Tan and Moisturizer, and the Clarins SOS Sunburn Soother Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, you'll never believe what's in style this summer. Chassie Post is here with the hottest trends for the great outdoors, like the chic fanny pack that's making a comeback. Don't go away. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and today 
We've been talking about hitting the roads or trails and taking in the great outdoors. And I can't wait to show you the trends that will have you looking your best while enjoying some fun in the sun. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. So let's start off with the cutest matching jacket and short set from Old Navy that is the definition of sporty chic. I love it when brands take functional high-tech performance wear and make it fashion. So let's first talk about the jacket. It's an easy, lightweight, half-zip pullover with a drawstring hood. And check out the color blocking. Such a big trend. I am obsessed with these fun, punchy oranges. So cute. And if you're more of a monochromatic gal, it also comes in a solid black. But also, I am a huge fan of this silhouette. It is so easy to wear. I mean, slightly oversized with that on-trend crop that hits right at the waist, which I think makes it look really flattering. And it even has a drawstring hem. And this fabric, it's fabulous. It's called Stretch Tech. And just like the name suggests, it's got a great stretch to it. And the brand says that it's also breathable with quick drying powers and UV sun protection built right in. But that's just the jacket. Let's complete the set with the shorts. I mean, they're made out of the same stretch tech fabric, but they have an additional feature. Old Navy says that they're also water repellent. And the cut of these shorts is so flattering. They're high-waisted and they've got a really nice, generous wide leg opening. And both of those features combined make your legs look really great and elongated. These shorts also have room for all your stuff, loads of pocket, and there's even one hidden stash zip pocket that can hold your phone. But if you're not a matching set fan, no worries. These two pieces also work great as separates to mix and match with the rest of your closet and come in tons of summer colors in sizes ranging from extra small to 4X. So we're gonna look great out there this summer. <laughs> Workout or weekend, we've got you covered with this sporty set. Next, one of my absolute favorite sporty must-haves and one of the summer's biggest trends, the exercise dress. And just like the yoga pant, you don't actually have to be exercising to wear it. So whether you're running around town doing errands, heading to the gym, or hitting the tennis court or golf course, the exercise dress is going to keep you looking and feeling cool. Now, I've actually got three of these very same dresses and they make a really great warm weather uniform. And I'm not alone. We've seen it all over social media. And once you try one, you'll see what everybody's so excited about. I mean, first of all, it's got the best of two worlds. You've got this easy A-line dress, which is inspired by tennis core slash all things tennis style, which is a huge trend right now, combined with the practicality and relative modesty of a skirt. See right under the skirt? You've got biking shorts with two pockets. It's almost like shapewear. And this one's from Amazon and is a really great example of the trend. So next, we've got two versatile pairs of performance pants that you are going to love for all of your outdoor activities this summer. So first up, meet the Climatrail zip-off pant. Now this pan is by Eddie Bauer and it's genius and perfect for those days where it starts out cool and gets warmer as the day goes on. And here's how they work. They start out as a full length pant and then as the temps rise, you can just zip off the bottoms and you got a pair of shorts. And how cool is that? And check out this fabric. The brand says it's made out of a four-way stretch that's also water repellent and has UPF 50 plus sun protection. And did we mention that they were also flattering? We give a thumbs up to the mid-rise silhouette. We've also got another equally versatile outdoor pant from Amazon that is a number one bestseller. These easy to wear joggers are also made out of a performance fabric that the brand says is lightweight, quick dry, and water resistant. And shoppers rave about how comfortable these pants are. According to the brand, the fabric has 8% spandex and it's got an easy elastic waistband with a little drawstring so you can adjust the fit. And check out all these pockets. 
You've got two side zip, two cargo in one back zip pocket. So no wonder they're so popular. And yes, these pants are perfect for outdoor adventures, hiking, working out, walking, you name it. But they also make excellent travel and lounge pants. Now, if you've been looking for an easy and stylish way to protect yourself from the sun-strong UV rays this summer, then you're going to love these multitasking swim tees from Land's End. They're designed to just wear over your swimsuit top. And according to Land's End, they're made out of a moisture-wicking stretch fabric that keeps you dry and comfortable on land. The brand says, besides providing more coverage from the sun than a typical bathing suit, that they also offer UPF 50 protection, which really comes in handy if you spend a lot of time at the pool or the beach. Plus, I am loving their surfer chic vibe. I mean, look at these stripes here. That's where rash guards actually got their start, protecting surfers from rough boards. And now they've gone mainstream, protecting us all from the sun. And I'm really into the classic crew neck style. And you can choose from either short sleeves or long sleeves. And they come in so many vibrant colors and patterns. And the best part, they're not just for swimming. They also work as a colorful cover-up. Moving on to New England chic, meet the Marley Lily monogrammed Nantucket cover-up. And she is cute. We all need a great cover-up and we could not be more obsessed with this one. Yes, we love the loose, fitting, flattering v-neck silhouette. The easy butterfly sleeves and the classic seersucker print fabric. But let's be honest, this cover up had us at the word monogram. See right here on the hem, you can choose from several monogram styles and three pretty colorways the blue seersucker, we've got the pink seersucker, and we've also got a mint seersucker. Plus, Talk about beach to brunch and beyond. You can throw on this fabulous cover up over your suit, add a pair of gold hoops, sandals, and you are ready for dinner. Just like that. And if you really want to do it up, they even make a matching monogram straw hat in my favorite surfer style. Talk about fun in the sun. Next, don't get me started on my love of fanny pack slash belt bags, or in this case, the bum bag, because I really, really love them. And there's a reason that this 90s style is back in such a big way. They're just so incredibly useful. Now, this is the Moonbeam bum bag, and I am a huge fan of anything that allows me to go hands-free. And I have to tell you guys, I wear my fanny pack every single day. And in my humble opinion, this sporty style is the ultimate in hands-free utilitarian style. Now we found these adorable takes at Madewell. They're designed by a Los Angeles-based brand called Lola, known for their stylish carryalls inspired by California beach life. Now they've got a classic half moon shape, thus the name, and you can wear them around your waist, a la the classic bum bag, or you can wear them over your shoulder as a crossbody, and it's the perfect size for your on the go essentials. This new collection is designed from recycled nylon with cool details like a chunky zipper, and I love the bold candy colors. And of course, one of this bag's finest virtues is its versatility. With that hands-free storage, this is the bag you want coming along for the ride. Whether you're headed on an outdoor adventure, to a fun barbecue, or to the grocery store. And last but not least, put your hands together for one of my favorite summer innovations, the ponytail hat. This hat just might be my favorite summer accessory ever. It's genius and hysterical, and I've seen the ponytail baseball hat before, but never the ponytail sun hat. Thank goodness someone came along and designed a hat that doesn't make me choose between my beloved high pony and sun protection. And let's face it, getting your hair off your neck feels a whole lot cooler when it's scorching hot out there. This hat also has a lot of bells and whistles. It's got a good wide brim, three and a half inches, breathable mesh sides, and both the hat and the chin strap are adjustable. Plus, the brand says that it's waterproof quick drying, and even has a built-in sweatband. 
It's also packable, so you can fold it up and throw it in your bag and go. Plus, it comes in over 16 different colors. Yes, this is a hat that both you and your ponytail are gonna love. Okay, so let's run through these products one more time. We've got the Old Navy Color Block Jacket and Shorts, the Amazon Sleeveless Workout Dress, the Eddie Bauer Zip Off Pants, the Libin Cargo Joggers, we've got the Land's End Rash Guards, the Marley Lily Monogram Hat and Cover Up, the Madewell Lola Bum Bag, and the Ponytail Sun Hat. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites, so tune in for an all new episode of Shop All Day. Is this the first time that you guys have been all together? All together, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, that wild sensation where you're like, oh, it was yesterday and yet yeah. a lifetime yeah. ago, or a couple. Yeah, and I think this show, you know, more than a lot of shows, it really is, a, it was a family. The thing is, Max, we're part of a family. You know, family's the most important thing in our lives. We were, you know, together for a very long time. I mean, the kids that were on the show would say, like, they don't remember life before Parenthood. Mm, yeah. They grew up on the show. Yeah. And, and we all saw them grow up. Yeah. We saw them grow up, yeah. Well, I live by Eminem. That's great. Just mm -hmm. And <laughs> Max was in there. I go, what are you doing? He goes, getting liquor. I go, what? Max. No, you're, yeah. <laughs> I go, get the f home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, we were just did. filming here, and you were 12. <laughs> I go, oh my like, God. I'm 20. I'm like, so. Right. He's a wow. drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Max. He hangs out with Liam, my son, my wow. my real son. Your real son. So your real son wow. hangs out with Max. your on-screen son. Mm -hmm. What's that like? They're a lot alike. Wow. Liam and Max are a lot alike, and I'm finding that I'm a lot like Max's character, Max, in the in the show, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. So you're more like Max than you are Christine. Wait. Oh, way way more. Really? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, Larry might know. <laughs> I'm just a little different. I don't know. Christina had it together. I mean, I have it together. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> have you seen the roles that you play bleed into real life? Uh, for me, it happens more at that time that you're living the parallel life with the character, which is one of the coolest things about doing TV that's, uh, th you know, six years, we did six years, so I got to grow a lot, we all got to grow a lot as people, and then the characters had their growth, and we learned from each other along the way, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of like bleeding over in that. Teach you how to swim like a fish? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice entrance. Thanks. But then you're onto a new character and you're bleeding over with her, so. You're giving really good answers. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> this definitely was a um, over, you know, big overlap while we were shooting where life and art were imitating each other. You know, we'd yeah. be uh, things I was bringing from my marriage or my parenting into the show's dynamic was also working the other way where I'd have things happen in real life that I would say, wait, well, in the show, this is what happened. Maybe we should handle it this way. So it was actually this yeah. kind of virtuous loop between life and art. Have you watched some of Parenthood? Have you realized how, how much it still holds up? Y yeah. <laughs> I've not watched. It's, it's I, am I, I, I stopped am I watching it after season one. You stopped watching it, so you didn't no, watch you haven't season seen it? Oh, you should watch it. It's you a good should show. watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, check it out. No, yeah. people love it. People say, Chris, you're Christine. I'm like, what? No, I mean, <laughs> I stopped. Wait, when was the breast cancer thing? Season what? Season four. Season that was four, season yeah. four. Oh, then yeah. maybe it was season three. See, <laughs> I don't know. And so after the season. I just don't like to watch myself. I would, wa I like your stuff. <laughs> then you should watch it and, and watch Fast us. Fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will.
<laughs> You're gonna watch it it's after. It's really that. good. I but the wild thing is watching Betamax. old episodes, okay, and oh there's no God. cell, there's no yeah. iPhones, right? What? There's no iPhones in the first few seasons. Oh, wow. really? Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. <laughs> it's all flip oh, that's phones, right, because because it, right? That was 2008. I guess so. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can put those in and post now. Right. <laughs> What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Do you think as times have changed, uh, the show would be different if you were making it today? You know, the thing about the show is of everything that I've done, it's the most, it's the show where I brought most of my, you know, autobiographical story to it, you know, like there's a, Story with, you know, um, you know Max, um, which came very was very close to, you know, my life. Are you mad at me because I have Aspergers? I'm I'm not mad at you because you have Aspergers. Never. The breast cancer story. We did that show while my wife was going through breast cancer. So the show, it's I. You know, it's and and so many of the stories came from what our lives, whether it was the, my, mine or friends or family or the actors or the writers of the show. It was um, it's it's such a it was such a it was so unique in that way that I can't really you can't. It's sort of like I can't judge it by like how would I do it now. Right. Your life you know, is different now. Yeah, you're just it was just right. who so we were the at the time that we yeah. did it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't usually, I hardly ever go back and watch, you know, shows that I, that I, that I've done. And I was, I have to say it was like, it was an incredibly, you know, moving experience to watch the show, um, for everybody. I don't know. All right. Okay, so. This is my recital. I Just think it's music. very vital to rock. All right. That's right. No. On top. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. Thank you. Thank you. slow dancing, but it doesn't matter what the music is, man. You just got you to gotta feel that in your body. Start here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Feel it in the legs, the arms, the feet, the shoulders, the rib cage, all of them. The thing that I thought we did really well on the show is that we we stayed with those stories, you know? Like, they had, yeah. they had a son with autism. Well, it wasn't like six episodes later, it was like, oh, you know, we're doing another story. You know, we stayed with that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we yeah. did the, the breast cancer, we did yeah. the breast cancer storyline. Drop it somewhere. <clears throat> I remember the first thing that the doctor said to my wife when she had breast cancer is it's gonna, you're gonna have a really tough year. And, um, and I was like, okay, so it's not gonna be less than a year. Hopefully it won't be more than a year. I love you all so much. I just wanna say that. Um, and uh, there's something that I, I need to tell you. And so when we decided to do that story, I knew it was a season-long story. It was not a story that would be a few episodes. I, I think the last time I saw the three of you together was the episode where you were all partying and dancing, and then you're sitting down and you pull out a clump of your hair. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the moment where mm -hmm. We were at a bar, a mm -hmm. yeah. and they were trying to cheer me up, right? Yeah. And Dax directed that, I think. He did. There oh, was a right. lot wow. in that episode. Yeah. yeah. 
That was probably one of my favorite but scariest episodes. Sorry. Right. Right. Yeah, Beautiful sure. queen that you are. Oh, that's the thing. It's like, it's like, does he respect me or? That is something. You know what? It's about time that to start is getting rid of so well, that. You were being rounded you so and you were dancing, so you know, it's just like. Hair on that head. Yeah. Do you want to go? Should we go home? Yeah. The other thing about our show, which you you did, so whether you knew to do this or not, it's such a different show because we weren't out in the world talking about politics or religion or fighting. It was about a wonderful family that had their own stresses. And that would sprinkle in here and there. But I think that's why people loved it so much because they felt comfort and they felt like they could identify with the Bravermans right. and they wanted to be a part of joy, which is now, ironically, we're circling back to within mm -hmm. the world. Like you asked Jason how he would do it differently, if, you know, if things changed in his family. And I just said to Joy, what about the world? Mm -hmm. You know, like, then I thought we would kind of, it would somehow come through, but at the same time, it was, it's such a real show. It's not an escapism for people, but it's still feeling, it's hope, it's love, it's laughter crying, it's, 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 it's humanity. You and your writers were all so true to your own lives and everything that you were being true to. Like it resonates universally mm -hmm. and timelessly. That's, right. that's the way that you do it. The more, the more awesome. specificity, that's the really more broadly great. it appeals. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Like, people are just fighting constantly. And the way that you guys did this was n not that. And it wasn't like being Pollyanna, like you're gonna be like, look, I just made a pie. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's fake. So all of that coming together, it's like you wouldn't sort of exploit religions, politics, whatever people feel in their own life. This would resonate, and it still does with everybody, like across the world the fans that I talk to and have now become part of my family. Um, ironically, like, I give them my phone number and a lot of people have my number. <laughs> it was almost as though you could see your family's messiness reflected in this family, but yeah. then also be inspired by, by the love, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, as much as the characters were informed by our lives, like, we could also learn from the characters. So and much. Because, because all of the conflicts that came up all the time were jumped on, you know? They, those conversations that had to be had were had immediately. Like, I'm driving to your house and we're gonna have this conversation, mm -hmm. which is so admirable, you know? It's, it's when they, they're not addressed and they fester that they're that much mm -hmm. harder in relationships, so everything just being tackled all the time there's and being articulated like so this. well. Yeah. There so hasn't, good. there's yeah. never been a show like this, and yeah. I have not seen one since. I have not. I really have not. And I'm not saying it because I'm a part of this group, but essentially all of us are a family, and I would take a bullet for any one of you. I mean that. Any one of you or your children. I would. That's just... I'm a Cancerian. Um, <laughs> um, but I, ju I, I have so much love and so much respect and so much gratitude for you. Mm. All of you. And that's never gone away. And I... I you know, it, whenever I see you guys, it's like we just picked up where we left off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's guys, family. Mm -hmm. You guys are, I mean, it, yeah, I can family. see it. You guys are still, mm -hmm. you guys are still a family. Yeah, for sure. We should play the song now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. 
We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Talking about uh, some of the lessons that you learned, were there some lessons or were there pieces of advice that you were given during the show or you heard others given during the show that you've now taken into your own lives? The way the characters were written, like I was saying, to always jump on the hard conversations that needed to be had, that's, that was the biggest takeaway from me. And I'm only now, after having rapped, now I'm a parent, and so... Uh, I've taken that with me. Yeah. When you started shooting, were you a parent? No. And now when After you watch, <laughs> yes. it's almost like you're seeing it with a whole different set of eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same here. I was not a parent before I am now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm still not a parent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty good with that. <laughs> interestingly enough, when you were shooting with Dax, Dax was a brand new parent and you were not a parent and you guys had to reverse roles on screen, right? Right. Wait, what? Because you were so, the parent for the screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Were, I'm, I'm, a very, I'm, a, I'm a very seasoned TV parent. Right. Like, yeah. I don't and never wanted kids myself, but I've seen every job I get. I am a parent, so I, I feel like I know a little bit about right. it. Right. And I get to give them back. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm a really good TV parent. <laughs> Just kind of touching on your favorite scene or, or one of the most powerful scenes that, that you remember. Uh, I, I got to say, for you, the one that brought me to tears, like uncontrollable tears, was when you left a message for your family if you were to pass. Do you remember, do you remember shooting that? I have the chills right now, yeah. I don't remember. Whenever I film anything, I don't remember any. I like black out. I do too. <laughs> I do. I black out. I black out. Um, but that, that was the hardest one for sure. I may not always be with you the way that I want to be. But I will never leave your side. I'll always be with you. That was the toughest one. And then the other one was, oh, the shaving of the head. Mm -hmm. Because I felt such guilt, too. I felt so guilty. Because I didn't, I was not really experiencing what Kathy, your wife, was going through, and um, and then, and then fear also, mm. as a human being, like, my kids were like, Mom, you know, you're not an actor. Well, that's my job, but like, I didn't go to acting school, so I don't know how to. I don't have a technique, so I don't. It's hard for me to get rid of the person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people, from, and so I. I I would go home and try to get rid of it somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Christina is, I, beyond, like, unequivocally the best character and the most amazing person in the world. And so is your wife. Yeah. <laughs> she is. So. Hey, Joy, how about you, Joy? Um, favorite scene? Yeah, what, what, what was your favorite or, or most difficult scene? Um... I would just say my favorite scene was like the wedding because like make you happy, make your dreams come true. Nothing that I wouldn't do. Go to the ends of the earth for you. I had a great
great wedding in my real life, and then I had a great wedding on television. So that's always the best. It wasn't the that's rain great. scene. It wasn't the the no, making out with Dax I mean, and like notebook cool. style. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm sure, that was great too. <laughs> yeah, was that was a really good moment. Yeah, I just have very earned moments. <laughs> Yeah, my hair loved it. I just think like overall for me the the entire experience of working on the show. I mean, it's still the greatest job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that. Yeah, like, yeah. Real talk. <laughs> um, and just the being able to work with such amazing people from from Jason and, and Larry and the writers and directors and of course all the actors. I mean, it was, it, seriously, it was, a, it was the greatest gig ever, mm -hmm. still, to ever. this day. I've been working for a while. Yeah. Um, so I just, to me, it was all kind of fond memories. It was the sweetest gig. I mean, I, it's hard for me to pick and choose yeah. what's the best part of it, but all mm -hmm. of it. And Erica, your, your character was on an emotional roller coaster. You dealt with yeah. some of the most, uh, the, hardest internal struggles of, of all the characters. What do you say your most difficult scene was? Difficult is a confusing one, but um, I mean, obviously it was extremely emotional when she found out she couldn't have the baby. It makes it really, really hard to get pregnant. And um, it's just really unlikely. Sorry. You can't apologize to me for something like that. I'm so that that was that was like the moment. That was mm. the worst. Mm. Mm. You've been trying to make me cry this whole interview. <laughs> I'm not trying at all. You're crying. I, I do want to say, you know. As a man watching this, one of the things that, that I appreciated was you were all super moms, and it almost felt as though this time was a time where women were grappling with this idea of like, you, you need to be everything, and you have to be a super mom, you have to have this career, and at the same time dealing with both stigmas, and you played both those stigmas. Yeah. You played the mom that could do everything, and then you played the mom that walked away for her family. Yeah. What was that like? It's interesting because I, I am a career woman, but um, I really get that struggle of retaining your identity. It, it, is, it is a thing that so, so many parents go through, and especially moms usually, um, of retaining your identity when you're no longer the most important person in your life. You, you've clearly put other people before yourself, and then you have to remember to take care of yourself and to take care of what your hopes and dreams and interests and skills are and, and um, just give them time too. So it was really cool to explore that and then really cool to also experience that <laughs> afterwards. Jason, was that the intent? Did you set out with, with this in mind? Because it, it was pioneering at the time, right? We got to look at all of these families. We got to look at them as one big you know, family together, but we got to watch each of them and see how they all had their own kind of struggles and challenges and um, things that they brought. And that was, for, for Julia's character, that was, you know, definitely, um, you know, a big part of that of the story we, we wanted to explore. It was, it's so beautiful that you have four families or yes. more, to, just variations on a theme every time. Like, tackle the theme from four completely different right. viewpoints and see how everybody takes it on and and then kids kids and you know Craig and Bonnie like everybody got to look at this thing from different angles and embrace as many points of view as possible it was really interesting yeah. it's yeah huge cast <laughs> <laughs>At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel calm? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. 
one of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Tell me about what's brought you here today. Fans? <laughs> It's, it's really cool that uh, the murmurs of a parenthood reunion have been very passionate. And you can hear so, some of them in the background. Yeah. I mean, even today, the fans want to see you back together. Yeah, they do. They want our family back on television. If you had to sum up the legacy of parenthood, how would you do that? I think Jason created a world that was both realistic and aspirational mm. and so I think the idea of real families with real issues and real struggles but at the end of the day they would find the love would bring them back together and so it was both something that people could relate to and aspire to and I think that's what makes the show so special and that's what Jason created. Wow! <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Mic drop! <laughs> That was a good answer. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the show is called Parenthood. And it's and it shows how hard parenthood is, but how worth it it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all different aspects of parenthood. Yeah. There's parenthood, there's grandparenthood, there's sibling love, there's yeah. all yeah. Of it. one of the things about the show that I would say is that the show allowed all these stories to breathe. We watched all the nuanced moments. Who's singing this? This is us. Uncle Crosby helped us make it. Do you so like it, Grandpa? Do I like it? I love it. Good. If we're going to do it again when you turn 80, Dad yeah. said we can use a real band then. That'll be fun. I'll, I can sell the CDs at Safeway. Come on. There it is. Yeah. It wasn't concerned with telling stories that were, you know, you know, big, you know, plot driven types of stories. We were at, we were able to really watch it was like watching real life happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not wrapped up in pretty bows every forty two right. minutes. And not wrapping yeah. them up, you know, so quickly. Yeah. And and sometimes letting things be unresolved. Yeah. And um, you know, that I think is the thing that I thought I think was so beautiful about the show. I, I hate to put you on the spot in front of your your, your television children almost. But yeah. Who's my favorite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monica's always told me that it's her. It's the first thing she said to me. Said, Literally. Like, you better, yeah. Is that true? You're my I'm your favorite. <laughs> Wait, what were you gonna you ask? Said um, it out loud already. It's, it's on the You're, record now. But you it's want on me the record. Choose. Yeah. Which is my favorite well, which, of these. Uh, <laughs> which you if you had to choose a scene, which scene oh, a do you, scene. Yeah, if you oh had to choose God. a scene, which scene do you think defines parenthood? The thing that's so great about the show is there are so many scenes. You can't define it with one scene because the it's a true ensemble. Mm -hmm. It is a true ensemble. It's not like it's really about this person, but we have other characters. It's without everybody, it wouldn't be the show that it was. So you can't say that. The, that said, that said, you know, in the pilot episode, when Peter Krause's character says to his dad that there's something going on with his son, yes, Dad, there's on. something wrong with my son. There's something wrong. What do you mean? There's something wrong. And I'm going to need you to help me. That's a moment that I felt was a very, it was a very scary thing for me to write that scene. 
and it's one that made me feel like that's the path that we're on when I saw that scene. That's the path we're on in, tell, in, in the stories we want to tell in the shows. We want to be that And it was that, that moment of vulnerability, an adult man asking his, his father. father coming to his help. father, saying that I, I need help and, um, and something's going on. And because men, you know, um, they don't want, the men have good, and I'm one of them, have good, strong denial systems. So we don't immediately go to that place. So for him to say that was to his father was incredibly moving to me how vulnerable it was. And of course, you know, sit, you know, writing it was one thing, and then to see Peter and Craig do it was very, there was just, but you know, I say, even as I say that, I can think of, I'm, I'm thinking of a dozen others, I'm thinking of hundreds of others, mm -hmm. which was to my point. You might know me. Uh, my name is Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. And I'm Bryce Dallas Howard. And we're in the new movie called Jurassic World Dominion from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal. I play the so-called brilliant Dr. Ian Malcolm, a role that I first took on, believe it or not, 30 years ago in the film called Jurassic Park. I don't know if you ever caught up with that <laughs> picture. Picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I actually play Claire Deering, who has a soft spot for saving dinosaurs and protecting her family. Oh, I love that part so much in your capable hands. Now, listen, this film, Jurassic World Dominion, is the epic conclusion, we like to say, of the Jurassic era. And we're pretty excited to be hosting this, let's call it today, all day special, all about our little, our little picture. Yes, in the next half hour, we'll be highlighting interviews with our fellow actors, and we'll take you behind the scenes with our director, Colin Trevorrow. And later on, uh, we're gonna have some nostalgia for you, a, a kind of a fun throwback clip from the Today Show Vault with our friend, the one and only, the great Sam Neill. Geez, I can't wait for you to see that. But let's get up to what's first up, shall we? I got to witness my pal Chris Pratt do a stellar job playing fearless dino whisperer Owen Grady. He's back in this final installment to the Jurassic franchise and spoke about what it was like to bring this story to life. Hmm. It's been four years since dinosaurs were unleashed on the world in the last Jurassic World film. Well, now in the latest and final installment, mm. Jurassic World Dominion, humans are doing their best to coexist with those massive creatures. That includes Chris Pratt's character, Owen, who in one thrilling sequ uh, sequence finds himself hunted by some terrifying dinos. Take a look. You were Chris, just saying that was one of the, your that's craziest action, action scenes. Tell us. Yeah, tell abs us absolutely one of the craziest action sequences I've ever been a part of or ever seen. You know, you go to like a a, a fireworks display, like yeah. Fourth yeah. of July, New Year's. There's always the finale. Yeah. You're like waiting for, if waiting for, and then boom, you're like, oh, this is it. This is <laughs> yeah. the finale. Yeah. I, I feel like the whole movie is that. Uh, it's like 30 years in the making. You know, this is the sixth uh, Jurassic film, and it's the end of this. Uh, Franchise. And, is it, it really the end? Yeah, I, think, I really do think it's the end. Yeah. Wow. You've got the legacy cast back Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, mm -hmm. plus the cast of Jurassic World all like converge, our storylines converging in, in, a, in a way that is very much a finale. What was it like having the old cast back? Oh, it was insane. Yeah. It was actually insane. Like, first time I saw Jurassic Park, I was 13. Yeah. I had no idea I was ever going to be an actor. Like, uh, yeah. if you'd have told me that I would be like doing this, I'm on the, like, I, there's no way I would have believed it. And I and these these folks were like cemented in my mind as yeah. icons, 
And so to be working with them, it's, 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 it's a dream come true. When you Let's say there's no way to believe it, I mean, you were actually living in a van, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you were kind of homeless, I guess. As well, you, uh, the home was kind of my van, so <laughs> okay. I did van have life. a van. It's a thing. I mean, just to imagine going from that to this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. And it's been now 23 years. And uh, looking back on it, it's, it's, it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. And yeah. How'd you get discovered? You were in Hawaii yeah. waiting tables. Right? I was in yeah. Hawaii waiting tables. I had done theater. Uh, I saw you had the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire yeah. on Broadway. It was like my dream to be on Broadway to do theater. I did it as a kid growing up. I loved it. Always loved to be a performer. And it was never real to me. It was the way a kid would dream of being like, you know, an astronaut. Like, yeah. sure, someone gets to go to space, but it's probably not going to be me. Yeah. And, you know, I just happened to wait on a director who gave me an opportunity and gave me an audition. And, you know, so I got paid 700 bucks and the door got opened <laughs> a, a crack, a crack and I was yes. determined to barrel through it. Going back to Jurassic World with the original Legacy cast, I heard you guys were sort of in like a summer camp together because it was a COVID yeah. shoot. So you guys were yes. all like bunking up mm -hmm. in the same hotel? Exactly. Yeah, everyone was bunked up in the same hotel. It was really kind of extraordinary. It reminded me of very early on in my career, you do these independent movies, like the movie that got me into Hollywood. I got paid 700 bucks. <laughs> We all stayed in the same hotel room, you know? And there's this sort of like summer camp vibe. You build these relationships that you're, you think are gonna last forever and it's like, it feels uh, kind of amazing. And these, oftentimes in these bigger budget movies, you lose a little sense of that yeah. magic because everyone's got their own trailer and they're off doing their own thing. They fly in, you might not see them until they're standing on their mark, but it was not the case with this film. And, and that was one of the uh, amazing silver linings through this process, shooting in COVID with all of the protocols in place. We were actually able to hang out every single night, have every meal together. That's a cool way to end it, yeah. to oh, close cool. the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was really kind of a blessing amongst oh. sort of the difficulty that everyone faced over the past couple of years. Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt, what a... He's pulchritudinous, isn't he? He's fantastic. <laughs> hey, now let's turn uh, to an interview with this lovely, lovely lady. Uh, and as Bryce mentioned, she plays Claire Deering, the longtime love interest to Chris Pratt's character named Owen. The two of us take on some wild dinosaur battles in this part of the story. And I told the third hour of today all about it. In the latest installment, Jurassic World Dominion, dinosaurs now inhabit the Earth with humans after their home is destroyed. Bryce Dallas Howard returns as Claire, who quickly learns coexisting is not going to be a walk in the park. Oh, yeah, this is so great. Oh Bryce, good to see you. Thanks good for morning. being here. Thank you, too. Thank you for having me. Wow, a lot of action, a lot of stunt work, a lot of... Yes. I, obviously, you, you know, you've been invested in this character. How difficult is it saying goodbye to Claire mm. when this is done, all said and done? Uh, honestly, difficult. Mm -hmm. It's it, And it's just kind of hit me in the last few days because the movie is coming out this weekend. And, you know, what's so great about getting to do press is that, you know, you finish the movie, but you know you're going to see folks, mm -hmm. whether it's in a year or a couple of years. And so we've all been reunited, running around, doing press together. And, and it's it's slowly winding down. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a little like, yeah. huh? I know. <laughs> you know, after this, you know, then what? But yeah, I mean, we yeah. had Laura Dern. We had Jeff Goldblum on the, sh on the show earlier today. You've got B.D. Wong in the movie, Sam Neill. I mean, the originals. Did you watch the original? <laughs> yeah. Did it, like, resonate <laughs> with you when you're actually on screen? Yeah. These? I mean, I will never forget the experience that I had watching Jurassic Park opening weekend in the theaters in 1993. Yes. I was 12 years old. Gosh, was it 93? It was 93. Yeah. Uh, my parents saw the movie. Uh, they weren't going to let me because it was PG-13 and I was 12. <laughs> and follow the rules. Exactly. And then, and then they came home that night and my dad said, I remember this distinctly, he said, you've got to see this movie in the theaters. You cannot miss this. Wow. Cinema has changed forever. This oh, wow. is one of the most That's Ron Howard. I think wow. when Ron Howard says, yeah, yes. no, yeah, 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 you listen. You and listen. so yeah. now, you know, it's interesting. There's this theme of female empowerment um, that we don't typically see in the action movie space. Talk to me a little bit about that. How did that become part of the film? It so easily. There was no agenda. It's just that the same amount of men and women were cast. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you get to wow, show it's what you can how do. That works. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> 
What a concept. It's incredible. I know. I know. Just, Isn't yeah. that interesting? Because, you know, we're thinking, oh, my gosh, this is all about women. And blah, blah. It's like, no, actually, it's just equal. And we're it's, just showing how we roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're just we're just a team. We're, just awesome. we're all teaming up. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And it's, I mean, the, the, that kind of ethos, I think, is intrinsic in the Jurassic franchise, starting with the original book written by mm -hmm. Michael Crichton. And, of mm -hmm. course, this incredible character, Dr. Ellie Sattler, played by Laura Dern. Yeah. And, and I think it, I mean, for me, I remember as, as, a, as, a, as a girl being affected right. watching her performance and just being like, oh my gosh, she is amazing. Bad, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Well, you having fun yet? <laughs> I am, I am. Hey, uh, there's much more still to come. Up next, my chat here on Today with the delightful Laura Dern. Laura Dern. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to our Jurassic World Dominion. Today, all day special. This movie is quite special because it includes actors like this guy right here who starred in the original Jurassic Park in 1993. Yeah, well, I had a little part in it beside Laura Dern. And uh, she and I sat down, by the way, with our Today Show friends to chat about our triumphant, <laughs> if I may, return <laughs> to a world filled with dinosaurs. Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum, they helped launch a global phenomenon when they unleashed Jurassic Park on the world in 1993. Y'all, it is 30 years later, just about, and we're back. Y'all, welcome back. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's so beautiful to see you okay, and see everybody. Okay, by the way, your crowd is so pumped up for this movie. I mean, the first movie was about the dinosaurs and all that, but it was more about the chemistry. So here you are 30 years later, the band is back together. Will you tell us what it was like, what the moments were like reuniting? Well, and Jeff's heard this, one of my favorite memories is walking onto set and we'd all seen each other, but I saw our beloved Sam Neill yes. with Dr. Alan Grant's hat on and I turned to my right and here comes Jeff in Dr. Ian Malcolm's black leather jacket. And we got into a Jeep together for our first scene together. And we looked out the windshield. Our director was taking a photo. We were getting ready to do the shot. And crew members were gathered around. Some were smiling or clapping. <laughs> Several people started crying. And we got very emotional just because we've all shared this first movie together. You know, we all grew up with it. And uh, there was something very nostalgic about being back together. Jeff, we had Chris Pratt on. He was pinching himself that he was with you guys. He a lot of that. Pinch himself a lot. I, know. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. Yes, What's the matter with that guy? <laughs> a lot of these guys, though, they grew up watching it too, and now they're kind of awestruck to be starring with you. But what makes this magic last, Jeff, for 30 years? Well, what Jurassic yeah. magic? Uh, Laura Dern, you know, the people, and you know, Sam, well, it came from a great book. Michael Crichton wrote that book a long time ago, Interesting Ideas, and then Steven Spielberg and turned it into a, yeah. a, a good movie. And the technology coincided with our first movie so that they brought dinosaurs to life like they'd never been. But then, I'm serious, you know, Laura Dern, you know, those characters, you know, beautiful. Laura can't do anything that she had already done 
so much. You'd seen all those things she'd done yeah. before. She'd already yeah. done Smooth Talk and Ramblin' Rose and Don't Blue Velvet. Him. And Wild at Heart. And we started. My agent. My agent well, and also We my started actor. around the same time. We did a, a movie, uh, you know, you in 1973, you were doing Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Yeah. And I was doing Death Wish. We've been in movies about the same amount of time. Well, and Jeff, at this beautiful stage in your career, you've got two babies. Yes. Ages five. Five and like yours, and almost seven. Five now. and seven. You've got three and five. I've got three and five. But I have a question. Having your kids watch this movie, have you debated whether or not your five-year-old is going to be watching this? Yes, yes. Um, and we have plans. We bought tickets for this coming weekend okay. when it opens. We're going to go. And they've never been to a movie theater before. Aren't you a little worried they're going to be kind of scared? Of yeah, these I, crazy I, I am worried. The, yeah, they're sensitive. <laughs> they say, oh, we're, well, we're, we're not scared of anything, you know. But we showed them Jurassic. Classic Park and the second one on TV. Yeah. And you know, the first time they've seen it a couple of times. The first time they were, you know. But if I said I'll be close, if you get scared, I'll walk you out. And, and they were with us, the most amazing boys in the world, and his amazing wife Emily. We all lived together for these five months in the middle of the pandemic to make yes. the film. So yeah. they also kind of know the behind the scenes. They, they went into the creature shop and saw the yeah. things being made. You know. Yeah. And I love that, Laura. On the cover of Variety magazine. Who graced the cover but Miss Laura Dern. Laura, I think this is so incredible, first of all, that you're on the cover. Secondly, I just think your character, it's so funny. Sometimes you play a character and you think, well, I'm playing a character for a minute. When you played your character in Jurassic World, the first one, so many young girls made career choices based on this character. They chose marine biology. Do, you, do people come up to you and talk about that? It, they do, and I was just sharing that an amazing congresswoman recently said to me that it was Dr. Ellie Sattler that made her believe that she could be empowered and have gender equity because of this film that, you know, with Steven's leadership and our producer Kathy Kennedy, we wanted an equal partner yeah. in the story to the yeah. male characters, which as you know well Brilliant. was rare in film. Speaking of it. male characters and your chest, you had an unbuttoned look yes. that I think we're all very familiar with. It's very memorable. All too familiar. And very male, speaking of, yeah, well, you can't get more male. Can, I, can may I see this? May I see the book? Do you mind? Oh, no. Oh, oh you mustn't. You mustn't torment we, me with this. You know this. what I happen to have? We happen to have this. Watch this. <laughs> what? Here. Are you doing it? Yeah. No, I'm not. You're not? OK. Let's open this up. Oh, yeah. May I? Have you yes. seen this? No. I've seen a prototype of this. I didn't okay. know you were going to have this. Watch. Okay. God creates dinosaurs. Okay. Uh, and then your line, woman inherits the earth. earth. Okay. And but this is the book that know. ostensibly <laughs> Ian Malcolm wrote. Okay. Watch this. Look what they made. And then. There's me. There, wait, hold on. I can't. There you are. Wait, look at you. I've got lines from it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Push my head and I speak a line. Do you remember these lines? This is the best thing ever, y'all. I mean, everyone Jeff needs to. <laughs> Just one button. There you go. Look at that. They're for you. Just for you. We are so excited for this movie. Are y'all excited? Uh, oh, I just love being here on today. I just, I just do. Can't you tell? Of course. Yeah, I, re I really yeah. do. Uh, and and don't go anywhere because after the break, we have a special interview with our director, Colin Trevorrow. So stay with us, please. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. You were still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. You were still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition.
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, but we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to our Jurassic World Dominion Today All Day Special. Director Colin Trevorrow first helped relaunch the Jurassic Park franchise in 2015 with Jurassic World. Yeah, and he spoke to Today about what it was like to direct our latest film and to bring about an epic final chapter. I promise you, I am gonna get her back. Jurassic World Dominion is a, a completely different kind of film than any of the other Jurassic movies have been. The dinosaurs are out in the world. Uh, they are creating havoc and genetic power has uh, reached a point where it's threatening the survival of life on this planet. I wanted to direct the third film because just being able to wrap up the story we've been telling the whole time, to be able to take these characters who I care about and make sure that they find a home together and feel safe. I, I include the dinosaurs in that, you know, the T-Rex. These are characters from our childhood who we love. And so making sure that all of these stories are wrapped up in a way that feels consistent, that when you watch all three movies together, it feels like one long story, which I really believe it does. That was really important to me. And the fact that we made it during a pandemic was really challenging. I was directing a movie in two different countries at the same time. It was hard, but we did it. I wanted it to be a warmer film uh, than the previous two. We, we were kind of a cold blue in Jurassic World. And then in this film, I wanted it to feel like a big, robust, romantic adventure. Uh, it's shot on film, which is really important to me. And hopefully by the time you get to the end of it, you will feel like you've, you've been through a lot and the people just look tired and bruised. And that's the kind of adventure I like. From a production design standpoint, it's really important to me uh, and Kevin Jenkins, our designer, that we are as practical as possible at any given turn. So we didn't make a movie in a computer. There are not uh, digitally designed backgrounds. We built 112 sets. We made animatronic dinosaurs. Uh, we put people uh, in real environments with real animals so they could look around and be confident that they were actually there. And then the biggest challenge is when you build something that's as spectacular as some of the things that we built to make sure not to constantly just be in a giant wide shot uh, showing off your amazing set to the audience, but really get in there and live in it as if it's a real place. It was very important to use animatronics because uh, not only is that a legacy, it's, it's what made us love Jurassic Park so much is that we actually saw those animals were real. Uh, but in our film, because we have such great actors, to be able to provide them the opportunity to not be uh, emoting across from a tennis ball, but actually be able to reach out and touch something in the way that Laura Dern does in her scene when she moves her finger back and forth. The puppeteers naturally reacted to what she was doing, so there was an actual exchange uh, between living things, which I think is extremely special. What is that? The biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. Run! The reality of these movies, I think, really matters. It's one of the very few franchises uh, where the main characters are just regular people. They're professionals, they're scientists, they're parents. And so I wanted to make sure the whole world felt as if it actually existed because we are talking about some real world scientific issues in the film. Some of the dangers that we present uh, are dangers that exist. Uh, and so the closer we could get it uh, to our reality, I think the more believable it's gonna be. Some of the more insane things that we do in the film uh, that you're gonna buy. Working with this cast was just one of the most satisfying creative experiences that I've had because I was able to work with legendary actors like Laura Dern and Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, B.D. Wong, and then these good friends of mine uh, who I've been making these movies with for eight years, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and then these new friends who I think make as much of an impact on this movie as any of the legends and icons who have come before in Mamadou Eche and DeWanda Wise and Tishan Lachman. 
all of them together uh, as as one group, especially at the end when they're literally all together as one group, uh, was it was just such a wonderful experience. And it was it was during a really challenging time. We were all very afraid. We were making a film during uh, COVID, uh, and yet because of all of these people, because they have such brilliant skill sets and also just beautiful souls, we managed to get through it together. I wanted to pay homage to uh, the spirit of Jurassic Park, but I didn't want to make a carbon copy of Jurassic Park. And that's something that I've really focused on in each of the movies. We feel like in order to honor what Steven created and what Michael Crichton created, we have to aggressively bring new ideas to the table because that's what they did. And so these movies are different. They're a completely different kind of experience. And yet I know that Jurassic Park's never going away. They'll all be there for people to enjoy together. So to me, it was making sure that the characters that we were bringing back felt like they were presented in a way that was honest and authentic and real. And you actually believe these were human beings who've been alive for the same 30 years that some of us have been alive for. And a lot's happened in those 30 years. People love this franchise, but I think they just love dinosaurs. And however we present dinosaurs in each of these films, I hope that at all times it taps into, yes, a fear that we have of them, but also a humility that we have in the face of them, this recognition that they walked the earth, they share the same soil as us, and yet they look so different and lived so long ago and actually lived so much longer than we have. It's just a very grand idea and a, and a really unique relationship between you know movie creature, movie monster, and audience. When people leave the theater, I really hope that there's a sense that uh, we made these movies for a reason. And we, we weren't just making a, a bunch of situations where people could get chomped by dinosaurs, even though we do that and I enjoy it. These are movies that, that did have something to say and ultimately we landed in a place that, that hopefully you can walk out of there with your family feeling a sense that, that we are small and we are fragile, but also we can succeed and we can survive if we do it together. Lots to learn there. We certainly love Colin. It was amazing to work with him. Yeah, just amazing. Now up next, we're dipping into the Today Show vault for a Jurassic Park flashback. Stay tuned for that. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. And we're back on our Jurassic World Dominion special here on Today All Day. To round this all off, we thought it'd be fun to travel back in time to when all of this began. Yes, the year is 1993, and a film called Jurassic Park was just about to hit theaters. Here's Sam Neill, who reprises his role as Dr. Alan Grant in our new movie, and he's talking about the first iteration of the dinosaur story here on Today. Your character is based on a real-life mm. paleontologist. Tell me yeah. about who that is and how you learned the tricks of the trade, if you will. Well, he's a guy called uh, Jack Horner, and he digs up bones in, in, uh, <clears throat> in Montana. And my character's very much based on him, and he was also advising us on the film. He was with us quite a lot of the time, and I'm pretty much playing him. It was easy. And he also gave me a lot of information about dinosaurs. He got me really prepped up. But then, in the end, because these dinosaurs were on the set and playing with us, I didn't need to know anything about dinosaurs because they were there and 
What was that like? Life. What was that like being around all these incredible, well, incredibly lifelike yeah. creatures? Uh, well, I was kind of anxious about it, but um, they're very professional. You know, <laughs> for all of them, it was their first movie. That, but you know, they no egos. No egos at all. There was never any problem getting out of the, out of the trailers. They never sat on my chair, <laughs> and I think they have a big future in the movie business. Wow! Wow! Terrific! Wow! Look at him. Can you believe that? Just terrific to revisit a memory like that. Working on that film was uh, a real joy and a privilege for me. And it was a treat to reunite with Sam and Laura for this story three decades later. Three decades? Is that possible? Can you believe that? It is, it is. It's crazy though. And we are so lucky to have you all. So that was our Jurassic World Dominion special here on Today All Day. We hope you enjoyed learning about how we put our movie together. And don't forget, Jurassic World Dominion is out in theaters tomorrow, so be sure to check it out. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm Jeff Goldblum. And I'm Bryce Dallas Howard. Bye. Bye. Today, today, all day. All day. <laughs>Oh my gosh, it's today all day land. It's Thursday. We're so happy you're tuning into our digital show today in 30. Hello, we're thrilled you're here. We've got a lot of great segments for you in this half hour. We're going to start with new ways to cope with those skyrocketing gas prices. Just ahead, we're going to share some actual solutions you can use to make your next fill-up last a little bit longer. And then can you feel the excitement in our studio? Because Valerie Bertinelli joined us here for the first time in well over two years. She has a, practically a dressing room. And now <laughs> she's back. We've got a lot to catch up yeah, on. Yeah, plus the third hour crew has a great story to share about a man and his feline friend who are always up for an adventure. And our girl Bobby Thomas is here with her best finds that'll help you get that summer oh, glow. I want to glow up. No, I'm yeah, like, Bobby, we need you. Does. All right, we ready? Yeah, it's I'm ready. Time for Today, Today in 30. 30. This morning, coping with soaring gas prices that stand to hit yet another uh, record high. Stop me if you've heard know. that one before. The situation is really wreaking havoc on family budgets everywhere. But it is also showcasing the savviness of the American consumer, leading to all new habits as drivers are adjusting now. NBC Sam Brock's been talking to people about some of the, some of the tricks they're using. He also got a few recommendations from some experts. Yeah. Sam, good morning. Guys, good morning. You know, Americans are crafty, if nothing else. But yes, the sheer pain inflicted here at the pump is producing new patterns of behavior for people trying to just soften that economic blow from parents, guys, choosing to carpool, not just with their kids, but with each other. Meals out now turning into online delivery to save a trip. And drivers now realizing you don't necessarily need premium gas, even if you have luxury wheels. The difference between regular and supreme, 475 at this gas station versus 529. That is a 50 second gap, 50 cent gap or about $10 for a truck like this. Anything and everything is on the table. For a nation that feels like it's stuck right now in gas gridlock, many drivers aren't sitting idle with soaring costs. They're getting creative. And my salary hasn't changed, so I carpool with my sister to work. Uh, one week she drives and the one week I drive. And it's not just mobs. College students like Gabby Solomon are crafting new systems for getting together. We all go in one car so that it's not like $20 each person like spending their gas. Carpools and car swaps. Yeah, I just bought the motorcycle because now for 20 bucks I use like for three days to four days. It just saves me a lot. Some families even working more from home while stacking their trips. We try to consolidate. For example, we, we're running errands now instead of, you know, perhaps just running to Target and then heading home. You know, we're trying to, you know, hit a couple stops. According to the consumer experts at NerdWallet, these are all common approaches to curbing gas costs. They're also shifting to more online purchases and also using doing all of their errands online whenever possible. Popular food delivery apps like Instacart or DoorDash charge delivery fees, service fees, or both. But even if those end up costing a consumer $5 or $10, it might still be cheaper than a trip in a car. Others on social media scoping out alternative forms of transportation. 
under the title, When Gas Prices Get Too High, Busting Out Kids' Cars, Power Wheels, Go-Karts. The satire revealing at a time gas prices are so high, bike sales are exploding. I've moved to the city, I don't need my car, um, can't afford gas. And even police departments are under strain. This Michigan Sheriff's Office is feeling the pain at the pump as well, according to its Facebook post, and has advised deputies to manage non-urgent calls over the phone. A sign of the times, as experts say those who need cars can keep some simple saving tools handy. Gas stations offer credit cards and rewards that can net you three to five cents off per gallon. Big box membership clubs like Costco and Sam's have cheaper gas and regular deals. And even Google Maps is your friend with an option to navigate based on fewer hills and traffic. While they may not save drivers from pump time dread. I'm 50 years old, I've never seen them this high. Every penny in this climate counts. Now we talk about those fuel efficient routes for Google. Let's just say hypothetically, guys, because the weekend is coming up. I want to go to Miami Beach. I know you showed that shot earlier in the show. I put in Miami Beach in the directional bar here on Google Maps. Then I just press these three little dots above that. Look what pops up this bar. Select route options. And then as you go through your various options, you can toggle between prefer fuel efficient routes or not. I'm going to set it that way. If you go back, check this out. On the bottom of the route, it says most fuel efficient. This is just one option. You also have companies like Fuelio and Jerry Can that say it's 20% more efficient. At this point, you got to say it's worth a shot. Well, Guys, Sam, back to you. Sam, the energy you'll harness just dancing in those clubs in Miami. <laughs> if only we could get that into the tank of your car. Every Friday night. I know Craig is going to join me, I think he said, next brother. weekend. So I'm you looking forward me. to that. See you on South Beach. Okay. Bye, Thank Sam. You, Sam. Hi, Sam. Have a good weekend. <laughs> We turn now to another high-profile legal showdown between two famous exes. This time, it's Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Yeah, at the center of the dispute, a winery they purchased together back in 2008. NBC's Stephanie Goss joins us now with details. Hey, Steph, good morning. Hey, guys, good morning. Brad Pitt's legal team is now accusing Jolie of intentionally harming him and his business in the south of France, the Chateau Miraval Winery. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were once known for battling on screen. It's all John, sweetheart. But this morning, the legal battle between the former couple is heating up. New court documents filed last week against Jolie and Russian billionaire Yuri Scheffler allege the two have damaged Pitt and diminished the value of French winery Chateau Miraval, in which Pitt holds shares. Pitt also claiming that Jolie has tried to force him into a partnership with a stranger with poisonous associations and intentions. In happier times, the two bought shares in the wine company in 2008, even getting married at Chateau Miraval in 2014. Jolie has not filed any response, nor has made any official statements. Back in February, Pitt sued Jolie for unlawfully selling her shares. Now his attorneys argue she, quote, sought to inflict harm, adding she violated an agreement the two made during their partnership. According to the documents, Pitt says both he and Jolie understood neither could sell their stake without the other's knowledge and permission. Something that's immediately apparent is that there is no written contract that he's alleging that Jolie has breached. Instead, he's saying that there were implied contract rights. Pitt's legal team also accuses Jolie of vindictively pulling out of share negotiations with him last year amid the couple's ongoing custody proceedings over their six children, alleging she, quote, lied in order to engage in secret negotiations with an undisclosed buyer. That buyer, Tenute Del Mondo, a company Pitt's lawsuit describes as a hostile third-party competitor bent on taking control of Miraval. Pitt's attorneys also claim it's indirectly owned by Scheffler, who they say their client had already refused to make a deal with. NBC News has reached out to Scheffler for comment, but he has not responded. Sometimes disputes are of such a personal nature that it's very difficult for the law to find the best path forward. Pitt's legal team is seeking damages for a, quote, malicious breach requesting a trial by jury. But experts, experts we spoke to say for a civil matter at this time, it's highly unlikely the case would land in a courtroom in under a year. Okay. All right, Steph, thank you. Oh. So let's get to our morning boost. Here we go. All right, so a woman 
who went to her grandson's kindergarten graduation, started recording when the kids performed a song that was part of the program. And she captured one future star who was kind of out to steal the show. He started by pulling out an awesome, <laughs> one awesome dance after another. You almost had to worry that he might have been about to fall off the <laughs> stage. But he had great balance, too. Some of the other kids were doing their hand gestures that they were taught to go along with the song. <laughs> but this guy, he's got oh. his whole thing going. And we're, we need to know his name because uh. one day, we're going to be hearing about this job. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. a happy dance. He needs yeah. a stage. That's yeah. a happy dance. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. In case you haven't noticed, we're pretty excited for our next guest around here. Her name, of course, Valerie Bertinelli. She's been a regular with us here on Today. It has been 884 days since she's been here in Studio 1A, and I'm the one who's counting. So let's not wait any longer. Valerie, will you come on out? <laughs> come. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, oh boy, it feels real. <laughs> I'm really happy to be back. Hi, Carson. Oh, my God. I'm such a little weepy little mess. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. By the way, we have not seen you. You've mm -hmm. sat in this chair so many times, and you've shared Why am I so crying? Much. Because you're home. Yeah. That's why. Because mm -hmm. you're home. How does it feel to be back home? Oh, lovely. I've missed all of you guys so, so much. I've missed you. We've got to, you know, play around a little bit, you know, yeah. on um, virtual. But, yeah. oh, it's just not the same. It's just, it's, this is... And you know what, too? I'm just, as I'm looking at you, I'm reflecting on so much that has happened since you last sat <laughs> here alive in one of these chairs. Um, oh, God. So much has happened, and there's so much that's gone past. Mm -hmm. uh, your ex-husband, Eddie Van Halen, passed away. Um, your son got a Grammy <laughs> nomination. <laughs> uh, you had a marriage that ended. So much to talk about. Yeah. Um, just, I Life guess, keeps moving no matter what happens. Moving. Yeah. What did what did Eddie's passing teach or reveal to you? Do you think in your life? Love. If there's nothing else in this world, go back to that key point that you know that you have inside you, mm -hmm. that you know that you feel for the people that are closest to you. Mm -hmm. That love, love always wins no matter what even when they're gone there's still that love there to be mm -hmm. grateful for that you had and you had a good relationship with ed throughout i mean i think that well, was... we had our bumpy yeah you know but near moments but, as yeah. well but but, but near the end, end yeah we just i i wrote about it in the book because i just thought it was something that people needed to hear that no matter what you go through you can always find your way back to love mm -hmm. and forgiveness and um, we were able to do that gratefully. I wish he hadn't died after that. It would have been nice to spend some more time with him. But yeah, I was grateful that we had that. I wondered too, because you were in a relationship, obviously at the time, married. At the well, time. we were separated. You were separated mm -hmm. at the time. Did it, um, because that's a difficult thing. I was looking on your Instagram and I like that you're very honest and you're like, 
divorce Sometimes sucks. Sometimes two on us. Divorce sucks. That's what you wrote. Those, <laughs> it does. But it does. It does. What, what sucked mm. about it? Well, because yeah. you never go into marriage thinking you're going to get a divorce. Yeah. You know, you always think yeah. this is going to, you know, last forever. This is it. Yeah. And here I am, you know, <laughs> twice divorced. So I don't know everything. Yeah. Um, you know, it sucks. It, it sucks because, you know, it's hard to not have a person in your life that you thought you wanted to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. You know what's great about you? And it started when you walked out here and you, you got tears in your eyes. Sometimes when life gets tough, people get hard. They become concrete. Their heart is rock hard and nothing's going to hurt them again. Mm -hmm. No, not you, not mm -hmm. you. I'm not let. You don't have that. Uh, really? Because <laughs> I, I feel like, I mean, I am going to be more than happy to be happily divorced and spend the rest of my life alone. Yeah. I'm, I'll be happy that way. Well, with my six cats and my dog and <laughs> yeah. my son and hopefully one day grandchildren. Yeah. So. Um, you don't think you'll look for love? Oh, God, no. Really? Ugh. Why such a hard, fast no? Um, because of the challenges that I'm going through right now, because yeah. divorce sucks, yeah. I can't imagine ever trusting anyone again to let into my life. Mm. So I, I have some trust issues that I, yeah. I'm sure I'm going to have to get past. But can I just do something real quick without yeah. taking us off? The, yeah. My brother yeah. just had open heart surgery last mm. yesterday. Mm. And um, I just want to say hi to Enzo. He is my nephew. And to Jessica for taking care of David. Thank you so much. And David, get your ass better. <laughs> Stop doing this to us and stop scaring us. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Well, oh, good. I, let us know how he's doing. Yes, so know. far, so good. And can I? Can we just talk about Wolfie for a second? Yes. Wolfie is in a moment. <laughs> Wolfie is. is Grammy nominated. Yes. Wolfie has incredible music out. Yes. Um, what is it like? You're riding next to him. You get to see his open road. I mean, oh what's God, it it's like? It's so joyful. You know, yes. as a mother, it's oh. just when you see your children prosper and and just their eyes wide and things happening that they enjoy. I mean, even things that happen that they don't enjoy. I mean, just watching through their eyes, mm -hmm. its it's been wonderful. Does, I love your love for each other. And I love the, how you guys joke. First, you're like, <laughs> I want to get more in his life. He's like, hey, mom, <laughs> arm's length, back up. And Can then you he imagine wants if you he in. blocked me on Instagram or something? <laughs> I'd be like, I have all these people that be so mad at you, so you have to make me let me follow you. Well, one of the reasons we love you is because you make this place feel like home, and you're going to cook for us yes. in a little while. What yes. are you going to make? I am going to make some um, ginger scallion chicken thighs <gasps> that are really delicious. By the way, all the guys were like, if she doesn't make chicken thighs, I, we're walking I out. I have to make chicken well, thighs here. Carson and car and uh, cauliflower potato salad. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped playing, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Jackson now weekdays at 5 on NBC News now women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of title nine we still have work to do in their court a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports listen now 
June is known as Great Outdoors Month, and this morning in our series, The Upside, we're going to introduce you to a guy who is always up for an adventure in nature, and he's not alone. His travel companion is always by his side, mm -hmm. or should we say, on his shoulder. <laughs> He's a head turner for sure. Because people, are, when they when they first pass, and they're like, is that a dog? Is that a monkey? I mean, they, they don't look like for avid outdoorsman and vlogger JJ Yosh, hiking has become downright positive. Thanks to this furry pal, a black Bombay cat named Simon. He really helps me to slow down and see the world around me. For the past six years, since Simon was just weeks old, JJ has been taking him on outdoor excursions. How many adventures have you guys been on? I mean, in terms of big adventures, maybe multi-day, I'd say we've done like uh, 50 plus. He's gotten to go on road trips across the US, but we've done hundreds of advent little adventures just everywhere. I hope to be able to do adventures with him for the next 15 years. You're doing well. I mean, we're, we're definitely soulmates. But the duo wasn't always a perfect match. In fact, Simon wanted nothing to do with JJ when they first met. He did not want to come with me at all. And for the first couple days, he was just one of the worst cats ever. Wouldn't stop meowing, wouldn't let me near him. And so it took a little bit of warming up for him to actually start to like me and adopt me. Yeah, I think they choose you, you don't choose them. Then the pair became inseparable. JJ naming Simon after his guardian angel. It was so strange because when I got Simon, that presence that I felt was totally gone. I do feel like he is watching over me. JJ moving to Boulder, Colorado to be closer to the outdoors. Then one day, he decided to bring Simon along for the journey. The tricky part was trying to figure out a way to have him walk on a leash have a harness on and kind of do things that would be more like uh, what you would do with the dog. And just figuring out if he would even like hiking. Hiking wasn't exactly second nature for this feeling, forcing JJ to carry him on his shoulders. And so that's kind of where he became known as Backpacking Kitty, because that was his preferred mode of transportation, making me do all the work, which is what cats do. <laughs> would physically put him in a backpack? Uh, I actually, he just is on my shoulder. I mean, I can literally show yeah, you. Yeah, like, I'd love to see this. But in true cat fashion, Simon wasn't having it. Typically, he'll just stay on my shoulder, especially if I give him a treat, maybe he'll do that. Okay, right now he's not. <laughs> but now, Simon's a seasoned adventurer. Equipped with his protective harness and leash, he has gone to places no cat has dared to explore. Soaring over Seattle in a seaplane, touring the depths of a mine, and now the duo is trying to climb Colorado's 14,000 foot peaks. JJ documents their experiences to Simon's more than half million Instagram and four million TikTok followers who know him best as Backpacking Kitty. Were you surprised at Backpacking Kitty's popularity? I definitely wasn't. He's definitely the star of the show and I'm the supporting actor. This pair proving even cats can be man's best friend out in the wild. How has he changed your life? Our relationship is still, it's ever growing. It's definitely helped me to not only slow down in life and be present in this moment, but also to care for someone other than myself. Wow. That's nice. I know. You don't think about cats going out, although, you know, mountain lions, things like that. Yeah, but you bring your true. dog with you on the boat and everywhere. Exactly. Pepper goes with you. Exactly. I don't no. take, take Pepper out of sea. Yeah. Pepper's out on your shoulder. No, exactly. No. <laughs> JJ says that when uh, adventuring with a cat, be ready to carry most of the weight. They can only walk a little bit of the trail themselves. And if you're looking to take your cat outdoors or train them to wear a harness or a leash, take it one step at a time slowly until your furry <laughs> friend gets comfortable. Why are you laughing? <laughs> your tips there. Your, the tips that you provided. That was just... <laughs> <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Ukrainians who are 
defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. here and sun kiss skin is in so we're gonna today we're gonna help you get your glow on. our today's style editor bobby thomas she's gonna help us all become glow pros with bobby's best foolproof formulas for every skin tone we all want the summer glow and i know uh, the sun isn't the best alternative <laughs> allegedly did that just come out of your mouth i know I can you believe that i, I need somebody allegedly. to capture that i know right. honestly did we record that for later <laughs> use <laughs> Well, I'm calling these glow getters, and Hoda, you're gonna rub on our first product that I'll talk is this, about. Is this for your face or for this your This is skin? L'Oreal's Gloomy Lotion. You can use it face or body. I actually, this is what I call an illuminator. And okay. I think a put lot of people comment I don't know. on my- Should she put it there? You could, it looks fine. Okay. You can really show people on the back of your hand. Here, try this one, Jenna. So people ask me a lot, what is the difference between an illuminator and a bronzer? And what is it? An illuminator is a formula that's reflective and it gives you that a radiant. Yeah, it's not really shiny. meant to be a bronzer. So you can find bronzers with a little illuminator in it. where are you supposed to put it? What so area? On your there, are, there are three ways that you can do this. Okay. One, I like it all over, like you saw the girls applying in the video, yeah. under my foundation, because sometimes foundation can kind of like take away the sort of dimension of yeah, your face. Yeah, yeah. So the radiance actually brings that sort of glow and it deflects so a fine well, line and skin wrinkles. Is By the way, and it's but, always flawless. Uh, nah, mm -hmm. Anyway, so I use an illuminator all over. You can also add illumination to specific points. And I have a face chart we can pop up here. Okay. Actually, we're gonna talk about in bronzer. But basically your cheekbones. Oh, that's where And that's where sort of the sun hits. If you have uh, oily skin, you'll wanna stick to the illuminator at the cupid's bow and inside of your eyes. Okay. But um, Drew Barrymore actually I love her. On social media, she took her Flower Beauty Spotlight, which yeah. you have this thinner tube right here. And she was showing everyone how easy it is to just sort of apply this to specific areas to get this that thing, inner glow. Thing. And it's three shades. And let me tell you, it's hard to get. Well, you only have one shade here because yeah, okay. it's been flying off the shelf. And both of these products are my drugstore picks that I love. They stand up to so many of the other more expensive products. They're both right. around $13. So you squeeze the tube yeah, and you can use that to yeah, target those Okay, areas. what about bronzers really quickly? Okay, so bronzers are really having a moment, of course, we're getting back out there. And cream bronzers are oh, really trending. Cream so a cream one? bronzer like this right oh, here, these. you'll see I have Revolution up here. Five shades, eight dollars, and what's great is will you really want like again this. on the face chart? You want to apply it to where the sun hits you, around mm -hmm. your hairline, the top of your cheekbones, and this is Mario, um, of course, Kim Kardashian's infamous makeup artist who really is all that. I do have to give him a lot of credit. He's applying mm -hmm. the bronzer, and he has an entire collection called Soft Sculpt. I'm telling you, ladies. I was beyond impressed. He wow. has the cream bronzer, he has the powder, and if you really want to know how to do that, he essentially kicked off the contour trend. Oh, oh he did? He started that, the whole I mean, trend? It wasn't that he like, contoured first, it was that putting it on Kim and the way he did it yeah. really well, set that's it off. He starts like the same with Feral Girl Summer. Yeah, yeah he right? Started that. <laughs> Someone said it existed, but I not really. Know, but so we, we started totally. it. Yeah, okay, got it. But he's now moving into what he calls soft sculpt. So I'm trying to tell everybody, go softer, make it yeah. look more natural. Okay. And you've last, always done that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, full body go. Now look, last but not least, this is where Hoda, you'll, you love this kind me, of stuff. 
Laura Geller, one of my favorites, she has baked body frosting. Mm, it's essentially like, like a nice bronzer that meets her colors are Tahitian glow, copper, oh. all of this. You spray it with water is a Wait, little tip. What? Wait, spray, what? Spray the puff with water and it will help it go on a little heavier if you want coverage. Now, I'm telling you, I'm obsessed. It's off and on your clothes and when you sit down. Well, and... that's why I like this formula because once I put it on, I put a robe on before I put my clothes on and any little it extra rubs. just kind of rubs off and you see me, I'm always in white dresses, et cetera. And it it's, doesn't rub off. Do you off. have this on your body? If you now, really your, rub it, I right do. Here? I have it right here. Look, beautiful. I have it on Bobby, my legs. Bobby, you always <laughs> bring us the best. You do, we love you. Uh, to see all of Bobby's Glow Pro picks, head to today.com slash shop. That was a great show. Uh, yeah, be sure to join us tomorrow, because guess what? We're gonna have another great show. That's what we do. We Every have great day. shows. We'll see you then. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We are going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurants, Shuka and Shuket. I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. <music> Chef Aisha. You know, oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Shook okay, perfect. Shawarma. Well, let's cheers first. Oh. I have a drink here. Oh, where's my, oh, what is this This fancy is a gazo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit and seltzer. If we were feeling like getting a little litty, we would have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. We're for gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat. We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have mm -hmm. some lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you is. something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your- Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so if Cooking <laughs> show over, this is incredible. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How all, much? All of it. It's like baking, where they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? the wet. 
No, that's fine, as long as it's combined. But right now we're gonna add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Four. Okay, so right this now. Is, that was paprika, this is cumin. Cumin. And this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. It is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was gonna guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really gonna give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're gonna whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize Look how beautiful this marinade. This is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're gonna do the onion. So okay, wait, warm. I know how to do this. Okay. What so you wanna do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Okay. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the chicken. So right now we're gonna use chicken thighs, okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dump the chicken oh, right into our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. That's like Christmas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Christmas. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this first so I can show you. You notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C, and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good, is it like? Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut and then when I do it I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. <laughs> Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Now, now your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves, because then I just don't feel all gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. A full yeah, massage kidding. here. Look at this. It, they're living the their best life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there if you don't mind grabbing it that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 48 hours later, 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. Now, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delicious. And yes. so I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why don't I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. Is that all right? Yep. Oh, okay. And then you are going to use your I'm tongs spread to okay. spread them out, yeah, right? right. But like, does each guy have to live in his own little world? No, nah, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now, does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's, they're not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven. But it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a place. French fries? I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. So to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay. We have mayo. A couple mayonnaise. And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. So okay. you have lemon juice there. Yeah. To your lemon left. Juice, to your lemon okay. juice. Okay. And then the next thing you're gonna do is gonna grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Oh, this is have scary. Have you done that before? I have, and I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so, so I'm gonna put the that. whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it's so close. scary. Like, am I am I doing like this? You are. Back Can I just forth? show you something though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this rested on here, yeah. this oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the end. So you could kind of oh, that's a better just do way it to like do three it. or yeah. four times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. 
and let's turn it around. Should be all good. And that was perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. Now, if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, what? no. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> perfect. Mm. Okay. And we're going to add the dry spices now. Oh. Oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I'd have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, a mm -hmm. half a teaspoon. Okay. And next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick a marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil do the trick. It, like they cover all the sins. Huh? All the sins. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, and Did then I we have our salt. All? No salt. How much salt? One, one, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. How would you tell if this is good or not? I learned something. And what was you it? You must taste it. And here, <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm going to taste, taste it, it too. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, Sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. good. Do you think now it's you good? Can, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're going to serve it in because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart. Okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this mm -hmm. is just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessive about clean plate club here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh. So if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken, we're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. We cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall prom receive. As promised, we're ha we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. let's just try and it this, out. We're just gonna have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this Oh cooking. my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Who mean Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? Famous Lester. Who's yeah, this? The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For our next trick, homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? You could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm going to have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. We're yes. going to show you exactly that, that how, it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're going to open the blades mm -hmm. here. Okay. And then we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. Now, see, so I'm this always is, going to get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out. 
and hold it by its edges because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini, cabbage would be good in here too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. You could sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments and we're not gonna use that right now, okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's gonna puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're gonna throw them in Stop here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chicken, one half cup tahini paste. So you're gonna take oh, that, that your tasty. small with your small little uh, spatula because mm -hmm. you want to get every uh, oh, single little Maybe morsel of that out. Maybe it is a little piece. It could work it's, with this. It's viscous. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So that. your tahini is in, mm -hmm. and then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Right. Okay. Rotate. Olive oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay. You can put that in there. Perfect. And then you have. Salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those, yes. how much, you guys, what you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make but it how rain. how do I know that? Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch, okay? okay? So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know that's what that, a lot, that, right? But you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. Just so kidding. this way you know. <laughs> this way you know what it feels like. Okay. All right. I'm so put that on your board. To, oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we got to do a little bit over the left shoulder because you know we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? When we walk out of here. Today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let me just. Oh boy. Oh boy. Stand clear. So what I'm gonna do? Do I need to cover this? Is it gonna come exploding out? Hit this button. It's a pulse. It says off. Okay. Good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pulse, when I hook my own, just on it. So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. Like have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around, which I'm gonna do this time mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of uh, flip them on the top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, I see. okay? I have so, to go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is. One cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's going to hold its peak. Look good. Yeah. You see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like. It. And now you can see if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly. Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right. So time to stop. And right. And you're going to have it. an intervention. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh, okay, so okay. let's taste it. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it. Mm -hmm. Lift that up. My... Now, What's... how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, and the I'm same thing, see. you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yes, let's do the All spice over first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is it that too beautiful. heavy? It is, beautiful. No, 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 keep going. Okay. And mm. you're going to fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. seriously. How beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, that? that is gorge. All right. So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little uh, celery stick? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef tasting. Oh, yes. Oh, that. I love that. And then we'll that much, bit. huh? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, why not? Look at this. I mean, if we're going to do I it. I mean, come to mama. OK, oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh, my gosh. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. 
You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. If there is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Fancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. Great. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong seed. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. Okay. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut, so that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around. And it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so you're gonna pinch it. You feel it's tight. I do. Right. Put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they're mm -hmm. so small. Oh, interesting. I, I always take the skin really? off. Really? Yeah, but that's just, I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the, the, the cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm going to cut it, cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then Thanks. I would just cut them into half, ounce, half mm -hmm. inch little pieces. Now, now would that, you do it like that or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive because again we want to be safe and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I think so I'm just... doing a job. <laughs> so you want them cut side down because now they're not going to roll away from you. Oh, right, okay. right. And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay we're going to add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good uh, fat content mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then last but not least would be our feta. Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. And I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I just kind of figure people can add more if they so right. desire. How's that? Perfect. Good? Perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you could show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it. You and know this it. guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're going to cut a little bit of the bottom off like that. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it, you got it. There right. you go. I guess that's got to be a They'll little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're going to cut this in half. You're going to take the knife. You're going to put it in as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? In the beginning. Got it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Good, good. See, now I'm like okay. stuck. Hold and on. This guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yep. So put yep. your hand flat. Mm -hmm. And now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. <laughs> go ahead. Who's <laughs> got it? Where's the chainsaw? <laughs> Can I okay, hold saw on, hold it on. on the other side? Yeah, let me help you for a second. 
Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're gonna take that out, okay? okay? And then when you get to this point, you're gonna take your knife, yeah. you're gonna go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would wanna do. Okay. I'd wanna be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's, oh, ouch, darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without, no, it was just a little tap, okay. just a little tap. So wait, hold tap. on, hold, but let's do it together so you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Put it down. Starting to see. So we're gonna go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay, now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good. See, you did it. I would think this would be the hardest part. Okay. So let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're going to okay. right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. Okay. You want to get the Where's bottom? my friend. Okay. Here we go. Mm. There's Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now so we I'm going to show you plates. how to use these guys. All right. Okay. One is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay, so you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part, you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was, on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't know. Okay. There. Okay. okay, all okay. right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that. Okay, so it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh! We're going to put that in here. I would have put it the other way. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're going to turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. My heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay, and then you're gonna put that in there. There you go, oh! look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in there. There you go. Get in there. Yeah, good. So we're gonna shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, and we're gonna wait for the blade to completely stop spinning. Yeah. Right, and we're gonna open this. Mm -hmm. And you see that in the inside? Mm-hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. So I get it, the food take, processor. If you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? What's this for, anyway? For, this for the shawarma. Oh. We need a fresh crunch okay. on top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take the top out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, let's go. All right. So this is gonna give you more of like a slice okay. of cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, just put a little Yeah, just put each. a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. There you Look go. at it, isn't that friendly? Okay. Perfect. Yum. Okay. We have one more thing, the star of the show. The chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, Look at this. Oh man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof the recipe when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here, mm -hmm. See how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. right in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, mm -hmm. and can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You I can't know. believe I did you this. You nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare okay, it? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help but make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm going to give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug. Mm. And here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on come here. Come to me for those of white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's there. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That is, here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread right. some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro serrano chilies and cardamom. Mm. I wanna get some of these onions some of and stuff in there, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with mint and cilantro? Do I and just shove it in just there? Just shove it in there. Okay. And then, of course, we have to bring over our cabbage. Mm -hmm. Let me turn this around okay. so you could have your half. I'll just do my. And I'll have mine, yeah. We'll just kind of sprinkle it's it in. It's the rip there. and dip, you know? I mean, it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Come, mm -hmm. Do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then we'll have to do just a little. Just a little on I your was first bite, ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you so much. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. Mm. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag swirl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match, and no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. on Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee set to hold its first public hearing on the insurrection. Televised live from coast to coast in prime time this morning, the evidence and videos that will be revealed for the very first time. What's at stake for